Caglione last pitched on Thursday, when he, or Wednesday rather, against TCU, went four and a third innings, three hits, one run, three walks, four strikeouts, throwing 85 pitches. So he's got almost full rest as he comes out on a Monday night against Thatcher Hurd. Finishing his warm-up tosses, Scott, we're getting ready to get this one started. You talk about what Caglione did in that last outing here, Kevin, against TCU. The one thing to keep an eye on is it took him 35 pitches to get out of the first inning in that game, and he was wild. He was hitting batters. He was throwing wild pitches, and he really tried to rein it in, which is why he did not get past the fifth inning in that ball game. He threw six shutout innings in the regional against Florida A&M, and it's been kind of that way with him. If he gets it under control early, he can be dangerous. If he does not... Florida's going to have to be thinking about some other things in terms of where they can go. And they do have options in the bullpen. They have a couple of guys who got some rest during that 24-4 blowout yesterday, a couple of guys who've not seen a lot of time. They've got a little bit healthier bullpen, a little bit lengthier bullpen. It's kind of a more razor-thin margin for LSU, and we'll get into that as we move on through the ball game. Time for tonight's first pitch, the start of the game, sponsored by Angie. Angie makes it easier than ever to connect with skilled pros to get your home projects done well. From repair to remodel. Get started on the Angie app or go to Angie.com. That's Angie.com. LSU, the away team, is wearing the gold tops with the white lettering and purple trim, white pants and purple helmets. That's how Kate Beloso is dressed as he steps into the batter's box to be in the ball game. Left-hander facing left-hander, and he's plunked with the first pitch of the game. We told you that Cat Leon has done this this year. That's already his 13th hit batter of the season. One pitch in, and the strategy of getting a guy who gets on base in the leadoff spot has already paid off. Yeah, Beloso able to stand in there and take that one to the small of the back. Now it's a painful way to reach, but LSU has their first base runner on, and Beloso is going to be allowed to stretch this one out a little bit with the watchful eye of Josh Walker, LSU's athletic trainer out there to tend to him. He's all right, though. We told you things can get a little dicey in the first inning, as Caglione is trying to get it under control and get himself settled out on the mound. Now he's got to face Dylan Cruz, working from the stretch. First pitch to him. Fastball there for a strike at 98. Cruz won the Golden Spikes Award yesterday. Actually won it for his performance all season long. He's a 421 hitter with 18 home runs, driven in 69. Pitches outside. He's gotten on base in all 70 games this year. Two for three yesterday, eight for 26 in the College World Series. Not much of a lead for Beloso from first base. He's not much of a threat to run. Next pitch is swung on and missed. A good fastball at 96. One ball and two strikes to count now to Dylan Cruz. Lots of bright sunshine. The wind is blowing out, but not nearly as hard as it was yesterday. Caglione fires, and the pitch is hit high in the air to right field. Drifting back on it is Ty Evans, still going back to the warning track. And he squeezes it midway back on the warning track for the first out of the ball game. Cruz gave that one a ride, and I think the wind might have helped a little bit, but Cruz has already hit a home run in that direction in this ballpark in the College World Series. Got a little hint as to how the wind is going to play at least early in this game. Now, usually as night falls in Omaha, it becomes a little more difficult, regardless of the wind, to get this ball out of this ballpark. But Cruz didn't get that square, and it carried all the way to the track and right. Now the right-handed batting, Tommy White with a runner on and one out. Gaglione from the stretch, first pitch, swung on and foul back off the catcher, B.T. Riopel. Home plate umpire, Billy Van Raphorst, is going to go out, talk to the pitcher, give Riopel an opportunity to collect himself. Van Raphorst is the home plate umpire. Ramon Armendariz is at first base. Jeff Head, who had the plate yesterday at second, David Savage is at third. Base down the left field line, Travis Reininger. Down the right field line is Casey Moser. Nothing and one. The count now to White. The pitch to him. Got it right there for a strike, a breaking ball. And Tommy White in the hole, nothing and two. He's a 368 hitter with 24 home runs, 102 RBIs. The stretch and the pitch. Swing and a miss late at the 99-mile-an-hour fastball. And now you see what Caglione can do as he gets his first strikeout 
two gone here in the first inning. Caglio didn't pitch last year for Florida. He was going to redshirt the whole year, but then they saw him batting and decided he would be a hitter only. He was coming off Tommy John surgery that he suffered a torn UCL in an all-star game after his senior year in high school. So this is his first full year back pitching in two seasons since he was a high school senior. Here's Trey Morgan now with the runner still at first base and two gone. First pitch up and in. That kind of dusts him back at 99 miles an hour. One ball to no strikes to Trey Morgan. He was 0 for 2 with a walk and a run batted in yesterday. Eight hits in the College World Series. Two of them doubles, one a triple, and he's driven in four. Next pitch is a fastball at 97 for a strike. 335 down the lines here in Omaha. 375 to the gaps. 408 to dead center. The pitch. High and outside. Two and one. It's uniform dimensions. There are just a kind of an odd jut out as it goes out to the bullpen. That's the only crazy angle you'll see in the outfield wall. Next pitch. Swing and a miss. He didn't get a good cut at that at all. The count goes to two and two now to Morgan. Nasty fastball from Caglione in and low. Really good pitch. Stretch. Two-two pitch. Tap foul back to the screen. One of the things we saw when Caglione was working against TCU here last Wednesday is he would throw a pitch from the left-handed slot, and it would you know be something that would be in the mid-90s toward upper 90s, and it would have some run on it. That's hard to hit. He's ready to pitch. Swing and a miss. He struck him out on a ball that looked like it was up by the chin. Morgan fell to the ground as he made that swing. And the leadoff base runner is wasted for LSU. No runs, no hits, one man left. After one half inning, it's LSU nothing and Florida coming up. From the Westwood One NCAA Radio Network, this is the Men's College World Series. Science is not an opinion. People come before pipelines. It's not too late to act on climate. No one is above the law. At Earth Justice, we hold these beliefs to be self-evident. As a national legal nonprofit fighting for your right to a healthy environment, we are 150 plus lawyers representing clients free of charge because now more than ever, the Earth needs a good lawyer. No one fights more cases on the environment than Earth Justice. And we win because these are fights we cannot lose. We win for scientists so they can serve at the EPA. We win at the Supreme Court because clean water is for everyone. We win against fossil fuel plants so communities can breathe freely. If you believe what we believe, then help us fight the good fight and help us keep winning by going to earthjustice.org today. That's earthjustice.org. My daughter Brinley is here at St. Jude. Coming here was literally life or death and it was so scary, but St. Jude is fighting for one goal, like this one mission, life. And that gave us hope. We haven't received a single bill from St. Jude, so I really can just focus on what's best for Ridley. Finding cures, saving children. Learn more at stjude.org. Bottom half of the first inning, the starter tonight for LSU is sophomore Thatcher Hurd, a right-hander, 6'4", 214, out of Manhattan Beach, California. His catcher tonight, Alex Malazzo, describes what we're going to see from Thatcher. Thatcher Hurd has been, I guess you could say, almost like a wild card, man. Came in as a starter, and when we put him in the pen, it just became electric. His fastball is going to sit anywhere from 94 to 97, and it's also going to have some jump on it. It's going to get on you as a hitter, but he's also going to throw a hammer curveball and a wipeout slider. Heard on the year 7-3, and 5.97 earned run average and three saves. This is his 23rd appearance, his 11th start. Last game was Thursday against Wake Forest. Gave up a hit in three innings pitch and struck out one. His last start, back to May 24th against South Carolina in a 10-3 win. He took that game into the sixth. Kate Kerlin leads it off for Florida. And the first pitch to him is a fastball at 95 in the outer half for a strike. Kerlin, two hits yesterday, scored four runs. He's hitting 293 on the year, 16 home runs, 49 runs batted in. 
Hurd working from the third base side of the rubber. Fires the next pitch wide. 96 on the fastball. It's one and one. Part of the home team tonight wearing their orange jerseys with the blue and white piping, the blue helmets, and the white pants. That's your Herds 1 1. Breaking ball down in the dirt. Two balls and a strike. I mentioned that Kerwin scored four runs yesterday. That doesn't put him in select company, really, Kevin. No, there's a lot of people who scored four <laughs> runs yesterday and in the College World Series. Yesterday was just bizarre the way that that game just became completely unglued for LSU. And there's a line drive into left center field for a base hit. Kerwin, a big turn at first base. As Pearson fires it back in, Florida trying to pick up where they left off yesterday as the leadoff man is aboard with a base hit here in the first inning. They say hitting is contagious. We'll see if it carries over from yesterday because everybody seemingly was hitting and hitting the cover off the ball for this Florida team. You talked about it at the end of the game yesterday, how these two teams would go back and recover from yesterday. It was going to be the big key to tonight, and we'll see what that looks like here in this first inning for Florida's bats. This guy stepping in right now might have been the hottest hitter in the ballpark yesterday. And Wyatt Langford takes a look at strike one on a fastball. He was five for five yesterday, two doubles, a home run, knocked in six, and scored four. Tied a College World Series record for most hits in a game. Herds ready, the pitch, breaking ball right off the end of the bat, foul, a roller up the first base side. And Langford down on the count, nothing in two. He'd only had three hits in the College World Series before yesterday. So a guy who is largely expected to hear his name very early in the Major League Baseball draft next month had a College World Series in one day on Sunday. Right-hander facing right-hander here. Nothing into the count of the pitch. Oh, my goodness. That was in the left-hand batter's box, and Alex Malazzo sold out like a soccer goalkeeper on a penalty kick. He dove to his right, got his chest in front of the ball, and saved the base in the wild pitch. If that had been water, it would have been a belly flop, the way he dove over there. He saw it right away, anticipated it, and great reflexes from the catcher. The one-two. Has to do it again. And now the runner's going to advance. He knocked it down with his chest, but as it rolled away from him, Curlin saw his opportunity and scrambles to second base on the wild pitch. First dive he smothered, second dive carom. This one carom forward and away from the prone catcher who's going to clean up his right hand, his throwing hand, which is covered in dirt, having dove into the left-hand batter's box two straight pitches. Atcher Hurd is making his catcher jump around back there now here in his first inning of work on the mound. Possibly a couple of nerves that you're going to see in a situation like this. Knowing that a national championship is on the line. And you play a season where you play 70 games and it's all about weekend series and then it's all about a double elimination tournament. It's all about your conference tournament, the NCAA tournament, the College World Series. All of it now boils down to one theoretically nine-inning game here tonight. Two and two, the count to Langford. Got a man in scoring position now. And the next pitch is outside, not in the dirt, but almost as far outside. Backhanded by Malazzo. So three straight breaking balls that missed. Run the count full now to Langford. Caglione waiting on deck for Florida. The stretch and the payoff pitch. Hit high in the air, deep left field. No doubt about this one. That ball is gone. Home run, Wyatt Langford, a laser shot over the left field fence. His 21st of the season. And Florida tries to pick up right where they left off here yesterday afternoon. They've got a 2 nothing lead with nobody out in the first inning. That makes it 26 runs in the last 27 outs for the Florida Gators, who have started this game very ominously if you're an LSU Tiger fan. Hard hit ball from Curland, harder hit ball from Langford. After those three were out of the zone, that one was right there, and he buried it. There's Caglione, who hit two home runs yesterday in the left-hand batter's box, watches a breaking ball up high for ball one. 
He's got 33 home runs. That's a record. And, of course, the national lead, which nobody's taking from him now. Swing and a miss. And a pretty good fastball. It's one and one. He can thank LSU for that. They eliminated the team that had the guy chasing him in Brock Wilkin of Wake Forest. They were actually tied in to the day yesterday. Now the stretch and the pitch. Swing and a miss. Another fastball. Just got a piece of that one back into the glove of Alex Malazzo. After two huge swings. Aglione down on the count one and two. Hurd has his side working from the stretch of the pitch. Swing and a miss. He got him. Went right back to the fastball. Threw it by him three times. That's got to be a shot in the arm for Thatcher Hurd as he gets his first out here in the first inning. Most effective pitch sequence from Thatcher Hurd, and he just rode his fastball the entire time against Caglione to get that much needed out. I think you kind of exhale a little bit now through Thatcher Hurd. Josh Rivera steps in now for Florida. First pitch to him is up a little bit high and a tick outside. One ball to no strikes. He had two hits yesterday, drove in a run and scored a pair. Rivera, two, make that 352 hitter this year with 19 home runs, driven in 74. Big overshift on in the infield for LSU. And the pitch fouled back and out of play. They've got three on the third base side of the second base bag. All by his lonesome off first base is Trey Morgan. There is a hole that you could drive several tractor trailers through on the right side. Stretching the 1-1. One -one. That's outside. That slider has not been his friend here in this first inning. Fastball's been his best pitch and really the only one he's had any command on to this point. Once again, he's ready. And the pitch, foul back and out of play. Now remember, he was a starter who became a reliever. And one of the things you heard his catcher, Alex Malazzo, saying is that when he went to that relief role, the fastball really started to pop. Well, that's because you realize you're not trying to go six innings with that fastball. 2-2. Two -two. Tapper on the ground, back toward the mound. Hurd's got it. Underhands the first base, and no, runner's going to be safe. He flipped the ball right into the runner, Rivera, and there was no chance for Trey Morgan to make a play, and now they're going to say he was inside the baseline, and it's going to be interference, so Rivera will be called out. I got to see on the replay whether he was actually inside that baseline on the flip. There's going to be some discussion about this. We're going to have a good look at it. Coming from down the right field line. Hey, he was inside the line the entire way. And the flip literally went right into the backside of Rivera. There was no way even a good glove man like Trey Morgan was going to be able to catch that ball. Trying to reach around the runner coming in. So now the umpires are all going to huddle. Including bringing in the guys from you know left field and right field. Interference is not, however, a reviewable play, is it, Kevin? It is not. Interference, not reviewable. Runner out of the base path, not reviewable. So this is just a conversation. Did anybody see anything that would change my opinion or my thought on what had happened? But this particular play should not be reviewable. Let's listen. The call in the field of out because of runner's lane violation is being challenged by Florida. The play is under review. Okay. I, we have a sheet in front of us here that says that that's not a reviewable play. Correct. Yeah, the reviewable plays, fair foul, home run calls, any catch or no catch ruling in the outfield, specified no catch ruling in the infield, spectator interference, scoring plays at home plate, force or tag plays at any base. Now, here it includes obstruction in the immediate vicinity of the base and running lane interference at first base. So okay. a specific so addendum this specific, to that. Yep, this specific place, the running lane at first base, is reviewable. And that's what they're going to do right now. They're going to show that, again, he was running the entire time up the line, inside the line. He got back basically on the line as the ball got there. But he was not in that running lane. 
So they're taking a look at it right now. This is big because it would be two outs, bases empty. Florida already has two on the Langford home run, and they've got a 2-0 lead here in the first. Thatcher Hurd throwing a couple of warm-up tosses right now to stay loose while the umpires chat with the folks in Pittsburgh about whether or not this call is going to stand. Out, they lose one. Correct. And now we are going to find out what you already <laughs> Boy, did. Boy, the drama. After review, the call in the field is confirmed. The runner is out. It's a runner's lane violation. Florida is charged with one challenge. So now Florida's only got one challenge left. They used it right here with one out or two outs, I guess I should say, in the bottom of the first inning. Now, I will say this. I hate that rule. I don't let, I, I think I don't know where Rivera is supposed to go in that situation. I, I, just, I think there's there's room in that rule for a tweak to make it a little more fair. Well, there are two lines. It's basically a lane for him to run in. He wasn't in it. Yes, so. I understand. I just don't like it. Got it. E.T. Oh, Ryapel yeah. stands in, watches a breaking ball float in high for ball one. Ryapel, left-handed hitter. Two for six with a home run yesterday. He's got three home runs of his five hits in the College World Series. 19 on the year. Open stance from the left side. Watches a fastball float by wide. I say float. 95 mile an hour pitches generally aren't floating. Two balls and no strikes. Big overshift on in the LSU infield once again. To the pull side of the left-hand batter. Ryapel swings and hits one a mile in the air into shallow center field. The take charge guy, Dylan Cruz, is there. And he puts it in his back pocket to end this first inning. Florida draws first blood, though, and they do it by hitting their 15th home run of the College World Series. Along to Wyatt Langford. Two runs on two hits, nobody left. At the end of one, Florida two, LSU nothing. You're listening to the Men's College World Series on the Westwood One NCAA Radio Network. Here at the Almond Joy Factory, where tropical vibes abound, we use soft, fresh-tasting coconut. The crunchiest almonds and delicious chocolate candy. Ah, but do you know what our most important ingredient is? Sometimes you feel like a nut. Sometimes you don't. Almond Joy's got nuts and something even way better than that. Yes, Almond Joy is made with almonds and Angie's list is now Angie, and we've heard a lot of theories about why. I thought it was an eco move. Fewer words, less paper. No, it was so you could say it faster. No, it's to be more iconic. Must be a tech thing. But those aren't quite right. It's because now you can compare upfront prices, book a service instantly, and even get your project handled from start to finish. Sounds easy. It is, and it makes us so much more than just a list. Get started at Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I. Or download the app today. All right, class. Pay attention. It's the NCAA Championships. Welcome to Fandom 101. We'll cover the tools of the trade that hype our student athletes to deliver it all on the biggest stage. Lesson one, whether it's a jersey, body paint, or your lucky overalls, dress for success. Two, let them know you're here. And three, work together. NCAA Championships. Attendance is encouraged. Passion is mandatory. Get your seats today at NCAA.com slash tickets. Class dismissed. If you can't get to a radio to hear our broadcast, you can still listen to every remaining moment of the 2023 Men's College World Series on your mobile device. Just download the TuneIn app. Go to the Westwood One channel. It's all live on TuneIn. Top half of the second inning, LSU will step in down by a couple. It's 2-0 Florida. And it'll be the 5-6-7 hitters for the Tigers. A team that fought its way back. And the NCAA Regional fought its way back from the loser's bracket here, played a series of elimination games here, figured out a way to get here, took a one nothing lead in the series, and then got blown out yesterday, trying to find their mojo again. And Gavin Dugas is in. It was a violation. They took too long on the warm-ups. A ball was recorded, so it's now 2-0. Now it's 3-0 and as the next pitch is a fastball downstairs. So three balls and no strikes to Dugas. 
290 hitter with 17 home runs, 45 runs batted in. And a fastball to him is up high, so he only threw three pitches, but he issues a walk after the violation. And Jack Caglione has given up his second base runner here, another leadoff man aboard LSU here in the second. He's hoping it works out as well as it did in the first inning when he rallied to get Cruz, White, and Morgan in order, two of them via the strikeout. One of the problems for LSU that we've talked about that they're trying to figure out a way to work with is 30 men left on base in the first two games of this series. Here's Joe Bear. Braden Joe Bear looks at ball one upstairs. One for three. He homered yesterday over the 408 sign into the batter's eye area here at Charles Schwab Field. Tight to the plate in the left-hand batter's box. The pitch to him. Fastball for a strike at 96. Joe Bear, 5 for 24 here in the College World Series. Couple of home runs. Junior out of Slidell, Louisiana. Pitch to him, bounces up there. Got away from Ryapel, and the runner's going to advance. Kind of a late break for Dugas, but he had plenty of time to get there without a throw. And what's going to be a wild pitch, and it's going to be a wild pitch, Kevin. It is. You are correct. Batting 1,000 tonight. That's <laughs> that one goes into the dirt and Ryapel just couldn't find it and scampered away from him behind him and that mask sometimes obscures the view looking down he couldn't find that one and now I'm meeting at the mound. Actually on one of the Malazzo dives it was a wild pitch. I'm two for two so yes batting a thousand but not just one for one two I'm for two. two for two that's yeah. correct yeah because you haven't been with us the entire time I've not done well in that category here in this series probably well, rallying in the, in the game that matters most. That's true Gobert steps out of the batter's box is and Rob Horse will go out and break up the meeting out on the mound. Runner at second base. Nobody out. LSU down two here in the top of the second. And the game for the college national championship here tonight in Omaha. Let's see if they got Caglione settled down. Big, lanky left-hander at 6-5. Takes his stretch, the pitch. Swing and a miss. He threw it right by Joe Bear. Two balls and two strikes to the Louisiana State right fielder. Runner leads away from second. Caglione's pitch. This is wide, and the count goes full. Getting a lot of spin on that ball as it comes up at 97. Right now, he's struggling to find the strike zone, and LSU showing some pretty good patience. Caglione once again is ready. And the 3-2. Slam over the glove of a leaping Kobe Halter in the left field for a base hit. Not going to take a risk with nobody out to hold the runner at third base as Dugas advances there. And here comes LSU with runners at the corners and nobody out here at the top of the second. Critical answer inning for LSU. Can they cash in with runners in scoring position? They've left 31 men on base the last 21 innings of play in Omaha. They've got two more on here and a chance to gain a little momentum that they lost yesterday. Now here is the difficult part for LSU and they would love to get these guys going but Jordan Thompson is the seven hitter. The seven, eight, and nine hitters as structured tonight in this lineup are six for 66 in this College World Series with 27 strikeouts. Thompson's got 14 of those strikeouts. He's one for 30 here in Omaha. Looks at the first pitch in there for a strike. 244 hitter on the year. He's hit 11 home runs, driven in 50. Kind of a nightmarish day for him yesterday with a couple of errors. He would love to come up big right now and get his team on the board. Infield at double play depth. And the 0-1. Swing and a miss. There's the changeup. And he was out in front of it. No balls and two strikes to count now to Thompson. Such an invite, inviting target for a strikeout for Caglione with 14 strikeouts in those 30 at-bats in Omaha for Thompson. Caglione is ready. From the stretch, the 0-2. That's lined in a left field for a base hit. Coming on to score is Dugas, stopping at second base, Joe Bear. And aboard at first, the happiest and most relieved man in a gold jersey. Jordan Thompson, an RBI single here in the second, and LSU is on the board. It's now a 2-1 ball game. And an answer from the bottom of the order. That's so critical 
for what Jay Johnson's team has to do in this game. They've got to get production top and bottom, and finally the lower end of the order delivering for the Tigers early on. We've talked about it before. There is so much momentum in this game, so much emotion in a game like this one. That hit was bigger than it is, if you can understand what I'm saying. Here's Pearson now. And Josh Pearson looks at a strike over at the knees. Pearson, the left fielder, one for two yesterday with a couple of walks and a run scored. Two for 22 here in Omaha, 226 on the season. With three home runs, he's driven in 25. Still nobody out with runners at first and second. And the pitch swung on and missed. Good high fastball at 95. It's nothing in two. You see in the spin he's getting on this fastball? Pretty significant. 21.54, the spin rate on that last one. Now the pitch. That's low and outside, and Pearson lays off it. One ball and two strikes. Pitcher's mound is basically in the shade, but because Caglione is six foot five, his shoulders and his head are still in the sunlight right now. Here's the pitch. Hit on the ground over toward first base. Smothered there by Heyman, who throws to second for the force, and that's all they'll get. And a right-handed first baseman, so he has to pivot his body. Wasn't that hard hit a ball? Florida will take the out, though, the first of the inning. Runners at first and third now. And Molazzo, the hitter. On another fastball with a spin rate of almost 2,200. Just for comparative purposes, the average spin rate of a fastball in Major League Baseball is 2150. This is a big league fastball that Caglione possesses. And with his ability to wield the bat, that's why the comparisons to Otani have been coming up. They're going to in this time when you've got a two-way player that's playing in the big leagues. We'll talk more about that as the night goes on. Maybe premature to compare him to a player of that ability, but might have the ability to be able to try to do this dual role at the next level. Here's Milazzo. Bunts at the ball and bunts it foul into the catcher's glove. No balls and a strike for the LSU catcher. Didn't play yesterday. 281 on the year with 15 RBIs. Three for 14 here in Omaha. Has seven sacrifices this year. The stretch showing the bat again and the pitch is high and outside. One and one. Runners at first and third, one down, one across. Florida leads it 2-1 here in the top half of the second inning. Infield playing at double play depth. They'd love to get a ground ball and erase the rest of this inning. Now the pitch. He squares once again and pulls it back as the pitch is high and tight. It's 2-1. Luke came to the first baseman, came charging in when he saw Malazzo show the bat again. Two balls and one strike. The stretch and the pitch on the way. That one is up high. It's three and one now. I'm going to guess the bunt is off. I would guess so, and I would guess that Florida is in real danger here. Guy trying to give you an out. And you're one bad pitch away from loading him up for the top of the order. Caglione is ready. And the pitch. Hit high in the air, foul off the right side into the crowd. That's going to run the count full now with three balls and two strikes. We told you as we started that Gaglione could be a bit of a roller coaster ride out on the mound. He was in the first inning, hitting the first batter with the first pitch, and then getting three in a row. Runner goes, 3-2, way up high. Nice catch made by Riapel, but the walk to the number nine hitter, Malazzo. And now a couple of things happen. Back to the top of the order for LSU, and a race out to the bullpen for a number of guys wearing orange jerseys. Is they're going to get some activity up behind Jack Caglione. Kate Fisher running out to the pen. Ryan Slater headed out to the bullpen, going out there as well. Blake Purnell, we saw him. He threw a couple of ground ball double plays. And now meeting at the mound with Kevin O'Sullivan, which is going to allow that bullpen to populate quickly. 
Scott Graham and Kevin Kugler here in our Granger broadcast booth at Charles Schwab Field in Omaha. For the ones who get it done, Granger offers professional grade supplies and solutions made for every industry and backed by product experts. Call, click Granger.com, or just stop by. Now the meeting is over, and you now this is one of those scramble drills right now to get some guys with their arms stretched and out on the mound throwing as quickly as is possible. Under normal circumstances, you're not going to talk about any kind of a, a panic or a sense of urgency necessarily, but literally there is no tomorrow. This one gets away from you. Have a long time to think about it. Back to the top of the order, and here is Beloso. First pitch from Caglione is there for a strike. Beloso was hit on the game's first pitch. Cade Beloso, two home runs, six runs batted in here in Omaha. He's got the bases loaded and a great opportunity with one out. Caglione can work from the windup now with the bases full. Rocks into that wind of the pitch. Down a little bit low. 96 on the fastball. One ball and one strike. Right-hander Ryan Slater, left-hander Cade Fisher, both on the mound throwing in the Florida pen. Gaglione winds in the pitch. Bounces up there, and it's smothered by Ryapel. Two balls and a strike now to Beloso. Missed the entire of the season last year with a knee injury. Walked into Omaha's the happiest guy here and has been one of the heroes that's gotten the Tigers to this point. Wind up with the pitch to him. Up and in and it hit him again. It was up and in and it hit him again. This one caught him either on the hand or the wrist. That's going to walk in a run. The game is tied at two as Caglione has lost the strike zone entirely here in the second. Boy, oh, and that one stung Beloso. Hit him on the left hand. That's what he's looking at right now as he came with his motion starting to get his set. That fastball rode up and in, and it caromed off the inside of his wrist. Absolutely painful. Still trying to shake out that left wrist. He'll stay at first, but danger for Caglione with Cruz to the plate and the bags full. Now this is this is the opportunity now that LSU has been waiting for. Cruz stands in, first pitch high and tight, ball one. He flied out to left field. Onto the warning track his last time up. Caglione needs to find the zone again. His pitch, he kind of guides it in there with a breaking ball at 85 for a strike. One and one, the count. To the guy who's arguably the best player in college baseball this year. The pitch to him. High and outside, two and one. 30th pitch of the inning for Caglione. Warming up a little bit more earnestly now in the Florida bullpen. The windup at the 2-1. Outside, ball three. Doesn't want to walk in a run, and he knows he's got to come in now. And guess what? So does Dylan Cruz. This should be a pitch to hit. Bases loaded. The 3-1 is outside, ball four. Caglione just walked in another. And LSU takes the lead. They put up a three spot here in the second. And they're on top, three to two. A three spot with only two hits, and that's going to do it. Jack Caglione will be lifted in the second inning for the Florida Gators. He does not get out of the second. Florida's lead is gone. And for the Florida Gators who entered this championship series with their pitching intact, their starting pitching has let them down now in three consecutive games. So Caglione leaves and looks very frustrated in doing so. He'll still stay in the game as a designated hitter, but we're going to get a new pitcher here in Omaha. Timeout on the field. You're listening to the Men's College World Series on the Westwood One MCAA Radio Network.
The Angie's List You Know and Trust is now Angie, and we're so much more than just a list. We still connect you with top local pros and show you ratings and reviews, but now we also let you compare upfront prices on hundreds of projects and book a service instantly. We can even handle the rest of your project from start to finish. So remember, Angie's List is now Angie, and we're here to get your job done right. Get started at Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I, or download the app today. Well, Kevin, we have seen an awful lot in this College World Series. I'm not sure that anybody expected Jack Leone to become completely unglued like that as he was here in this inning. He's given up three runs. He only has one out at this point. The bases are still loaded, and that is what he is currently handing off to Cade Fisher. Now, Fisher will appear in the College World Series for the fifth time. No decisions, a 4.26 earned run average. Three runs on eight hits in six and a third innings here in Omaha with a walk and six strikeouts. He has done a good job out of the bullpen, a smooth-throwing left-hander, but i got to say this is a little bit shocking. Well, how much does he have? He threw 50 pitches two days ago in game one of these finals, three and a third, four hits, one run, no walks, and five strikeouts. All of the pregame conversation was about LSU and what they had pitching-wise, and now all of a sudden, the focus has shifted entirely on who's Florida going to be going with after 46 pitches from Jack Caglione. Amazing. The starting pitching was in order for Florida. They got four innings from Sprout, two and a third from Waldrop, and now one and a third from Caglione. Not what they thought they had coming into this championship series. And here's the thing to think about at this point. As I said, there's only one out. The bases are still loaded. And you've got dangerous hitters coming up here. This is an opportunity for LSU to put up an even more crooked number than this one and really take control of this game here. And it's only the second inning. Baseball's a funny game. So Fisher has finished his warm-up tosses. And now he's going to face a tremendously dangerous hitter from the right side of the plate in Tommy White. White struck out his first time up. He's 9 for 31 here in the College World Series with a couple of home runs and five RBIs. With the bases loaded, first pitch, big swing, and a foul back off the screen. And that is strike one. It was first pitch swinging on thursday night in extra innings that gave him a walk-off home run and put lsu into this championship series next pitch that's way inside he dances over the top of it one ball and one strike outfield is very deep tyler shellnut shading his eyes on each pitch in left field this pitch is high and outside, glances off the glove of Ryapel, but nobody's going anywhere. Two balls and one strike to count now to White. Two hits, three walks, and a hit batter in this inning for LSU. Now the pitch. Chopped on the ground toward third base. It's going to be a foul ball. Had an opportunity there for what could have been a double play, but the ball was fielded on the wrong side, if you're Florida, of the third base bag. Kobe Halter actually fielded that ball, stepped on the bag, and fired a seed to first base that beat White down the line, but all of it for naught as the ball was foul. So White, after that sprinter's run to try to break the tape at first base, kind of a slow walk back to the batter's box, gathering himself. Kevin pointed out, this is not typical Omaha June weather tonight, though. It is very pleasant. Nowhere near the heat and humidity you might expect at this time of year. Here's the pitch. It's low and inside again. Three balls and two strikes. A full count with the bases loaded and one out. LSU's got three across, and they've got the lead. The 3-2. Slammed in the left field for a base hit. One run will score, and that's all they'll get.
Malazzo crosses the plate. Everybody else up a base. An RBI single for White. And the big inning continues for LSU. It's a 4-2 ball game. Patient at bat. The patient approach was one that LSU wanted to take against Caglione. It paid off as his wildness caused problems and eventually cost him his start. And now patient at the plate from Tommy White. Got a pitch he could drive. And the first pitch to Trey Morgan. And it's a foul ball down the left side into the crowd. Nothing in one. Wow. Major, major turn. Left-hander facing left-hander and a breaking ball. Kind of a weak swing by Morgan and a miss. It's nothing in two. He went down on strikes without a good swing in his first at bat. That was facing Caglione. Fisher into his windup in the 0-2. That one's fouled again, almost to the exact same spot he hit the first foul ball. Count holds at nothing in two. Ninth batter of the inning for LSU. Gavin Dugas, who led off the inning, is waiting on deck. The pitch hit high in the air to center field. Knifer drifts back on it. He makes the catch. Deep enough to score the run, however. And coming on is Beloso with the fifth run of the inning for LSU. Cruz takes third. It's now a 5-2 game on the sack fly and RBI for Trey Morgan. His 52nd run batted into the year. Another productive at-bat for an LSU Tiger. This time from Trey Morgan. Found a pitch he can handle. Put it into center field. Plenty deep. No chance for Langford out there. And the Tigers keep rolling. My, my, my. So for the second time this inning, we see Dugas. He started it off with a walk. He was actually spotted a pitch because of a warm-up violation. He came around to score. First and third, two down, and he looks at a fastball on the outside, half for a strike. You do wonder in situations like this, how does Florida react to this now? Next pitch is right there for a strike once again. It's nothing in two. All the momentum from yesterday, a quick 2-0 lead here today in the first. And then this inning, which saps everything out of the team that's standing out in the field. The pitch, fouled back off the screen. Down holds it, nothing at two. And you're a fielder, and hit batters, base on balls, it just it drains you because there's nothing you can do to stop it. Not to mention a pitching change. You've been out there a long time. Stretch by Fisher in the 0-2. Hit on the ground over toward the hole. That's going to be through it in the left field for a base hit. Cruz comes on to score. And an RBI single for Dugas in his second at bat of the inning. It's now 6-2 LSU here in the second. Well, we saw 24-4 yesterday. Are we ticketed for another one like that here in the championship game? LSU was on the wrong end of that score yesterday afternoon, but they're feeling much better early on in this one. P.S. That chain that closes the book on Jack Caglione. All six of those runs are his. Here's Joe okay. Bear, and he looks at a ball outside. One ball and no strikes. He singled his first time up. Came around to score. And he lines it into right field. That's going to be a base hit. Evans charging hard up with the ball. Fires back in and throws behind the runner over at third base. Somehow, Halter stopped the ball, kept it in front of him. And everybody remains where they are. I don't know how that run didn't score. And they were fortunate on the throw in from Evans as it bounced away that it did not trickle too far behind because there was no one backing up Halter at third as the ball skipped off the hard pan infield and into the grass behind third base. Ty Evans has a good arm out there, but I don't understand with two outs how that's not scoring. So here's Thompson, and he looks at ball one. He got off the schneid earlier this inning with an RBI single. Got a chance for more now. They're still loaded. The pitch. 
Evans inside, bouncing up there and blocked by E.T. Riopelle. The 12th batter this inning for LSU. Thompson has a chance to blow the lid off this one. Lidstrom is in for a strike. It's 2-1. and one. Gage Fisher into his windup and the pitch. Hit high in the air to center field. Going back on it, Langford. Still going back, but he finds his spot and makes the catch. And that will do it for what was a glorious inning. For LSU and their fans, they score six times in the inning. And they leave them loaded. We're going to the bottom half of the second inning. It's LSU 6 and Florida 2. From the Westwood 1 NCAA Radio Network, this is the Men's College World Series. I had an important job. And it wasn't just a job. It was keeping my brothers and sisters safe. And coming back it felt like kind of thrown away it's like you're useless you know um we don't really have a need for you now because you can't really do anything for us that's the way i felt if it hadn't been for wounded warrior project i honestly don't know if i would be here it was the camaraderie that i saw and had it was like i got my family back again we all felt the connection, you know, like that brother and sisterhood. See how Wounded Warrior Project empowers women veterans like Donna by visiting woundedwarriorproject.org slash empowerwomenvets. This love I will build, a wonderful thing that makes this life better for you and for me. Shriners Hospitals for Children has been creating wonderful opportunities for children in need. This life-changing medical care helps them do the things they've always dreamed of. To find out more, go to loveshriners.org. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is the Westwood One NCAA Radio Network, your home for the national championships. Bottom of the second inning. Ball one. And ball one thrown by Thatcher Hurd to the leadoff hitter for Florida, Luke Heyman. This after his teammates for LSU just put up six in the top of this inning to take a 6-2 lead in this championship game. Hurd's next pitch is a fastball down low for a ball. If there was ever an inning where they wanted their pitcher to get a 1-2-3, this is the one. Heyman 0 for 5 in yesterday's game, but did score a run. And he takes a look at his strike. It's 2-1. Well, that was a late call from Billy Van Raphorst, and that did not delight Luke Heyman, who walked out of the batter's box, had to be motioned back in by the home plate umpire. Here comes the stretch of the 2-1. Swing and a miss and a high fastball at 95. It's 2-2. Two two. But that... 2-1 pitch changed the entire at-bat. Heyman maybe doesn't offer it that one if the previous pitch is called a ball, but now it feels like he's got to expand his zone. Thatcher Hurd ready. 2-2. Swing and a miss at the slider. He got him. There's no doubt that that at-bat changed, and Hurd will take it. His second strikeout and one away here in the second inning. And I think Billy Van Rapphors, judging by the looks he was giving to the Florida dugout, was hearing it as Heyman walked back to the dugout that 2-0 pitch called a delayed high strike changed the entire at bat here is ty evans he's been the best hitter in the college world series first pitch to him late swing at a fastball for strike one he had two home runs including a grand slam yesterday and drove in five he's got two doubles four home runs and eight runs batted in here in omaha right-handed batter deep in the box and the pitch to him Swing and a miss. He is late on both fastballs, and it's nothing in two now to Evans.
Thatcher Hurd. Right-hander has his sign and the pitch. Just a little bit outside. Right back to the fastball. You might have expected breaking ball there. It's one ball and two strikes to count now to Ty Evans. Now Hurd is ready. And the one-two. Ball it outside, two and two. Wind is still blowing out. It's actually blowing from left over to right now. Yet to be a real factor here in this game over the course of the first inning and a half plus. Heard kicks for the 2 2, hit a mile in the air into shallow left field. Cole being made by the shortstop, and Thompson makes the catch for out number two. It's about the same launch angle he had on his grand slam yesterday. Evans sent that one high in the air as well. This one didn't quite have the carry of those home runs down the left field line. So with two God here, we'll bring up Tyler Shelnut, junior out of Lake City, Florida. Left fielder, two for five yesterday with a couple of runs scored. He's a 282 hitter. Pitch to him. Over on the inside half for a strike. Hertz found his location with his secondary pitches in this inning. Good news for LSU now with a four-run lead. Hurd fires again, and the fastball right down the middle with a plate for a strike. Shelma took it with his bat on his shoulder, so he's down on the count now. Nothing in two. This is precisely the type of inning that LSU was hoping for. They'd love to get it right here and get back to the dugout. The 0-2 pitch. Fastball up a little bit high. He got the show of the glove from Alex Milazzo. That's where he wanted the pitch, but they couldn't get Shell enough to chase it. 6-2 LSU here in the second. The stretch and the pitch. Breaking ball. Oh, third strike. He struck him out. Got it over on the outside corner. Two strikeouts in the inning. Three and all for Thatcher Hurd. Most importantly, he sets the Gators down in order in the second. We are going to the third. It's LSU 6, Florida 2. You're listening to the Men's College World Series on the Westwood One NCAA Radio Network. Every day, PGA coaches across the country are helping golfers reach their goals. First time picking up a club? Let's get started. 16 holes still giving you nightmares? Let's conquer it. Want to bring a friend along? Let's learn together. Let's focus on health. On fun. On nothing at all. Let's talk goals. Let's try something new. Let's keep it going. Let's have some fun. Improve, connect, or escape. Wherever your golf journey is headed, let's get you there. Find your PGA coach at PGA.com slash coach. John Bishop here at Charles Schwab Field up in the LSU suite from the man who last won a national championship with LSU, Hall of Fame coach Paul Maneri. Coach, so far this game kind of has a feel of one of those Sunday games. You just never know what to expect. You never know what to expect except, you know, their Florida's pitcher has a great arm, but he has had some command issues, and I think that got to him. You know, he threw such a dominating first inning, but just couldn't command the ball in the second inning. We had some great at-bats, some clutch hits. I was so happy for Jordan Thompson, who's been struggling the whole tournament, came through with a really big hit there, and a couple of other guys had great at-bats. So we put up a nice crooked number there, got their starting pitcher out of the game. You've been on the losing end of a bad score before. What do you? What did you? What would you tell a team after suffering a loss like LSU did yesterday? Well, you just have to condition them that every day is a new day. You know, we used to have the midnight rule. Midnight signifies a brand new day, and what you did yesterday doesn't mean anything today. Whether you lost, whether you won, the score is going to be zero zero starting the next day. Coach, you really appreciate it. I bet you miss it down there on days like this. I really do, but. Uh, you know, they're, we're in good hands down there with Jay. And, you know, I'm just so proud of all these young players. Or Guys, out bottom of the third inning and first pitch swinging for LSU as Pearson hits it into foul ground. The third baseman Halter drifts back and makes the catch. And you got one pitch and one out here in the third. Such an expanse of foul territory here in Omaha that you can't give up on any ball hit in foul ground a lot of places you wouldn't even bother to chase that one down there's a lot of room to roll back there and it turns out to be one pitch one out to start this third inning 
So here's the number nine hitter, Malazzo. His team up 6-2 here in the top of the third inning. He looks at a fastball. But check that, a breaking ball from Kate Fisher for a strike. Malazzo walked and scored in the second inning. Next pitch to him is outside. off the outside part of the plate. I'm going to let Billy Van Raphorst do that himself, right? He's, he's the loudest home plate ump we've had. And very descriptive. Yes. The pitch. And now the, now yeah, he sure. just says ball. Thank sure. you. Now, Thank you, Billy. We give Billy the big stage. Yeah. And... That's why they pay us. Wine in the 2-1 pitch. Correct. That's a strike. Two balls and two strikes to count out of Malazzo. Could use a little more description there, Billy. Let's uh, let's get into where it was a strike. Now the 2-2. Oh! It was up high. <laughs> Ish. Three balls and two strikes to count out of Malazzo. The top of the order waiting for LSU. Payoff pitch is up and in with a fastball, ball four. That is another walk. The fourth issued by Gator pitching. And you got a base runner again for the top of the order for LSU as Beloso steps in for the third time. He's been in the batter's box twice. He's been hit twice. Six free bases issued by Florida pitching with one out in the third. Four walks and two hit batters. This guy is the two hit batters. First pitch to him. Sweeping breaking ball in there for a strike. Also took one on the wrist his last time up. Had to shake it off. That was a an RBI hit by pitch, and he came around to score a run. Next pitch to him. Swing and a miss on that sweeping breaking ball once again. That's a curveball. And the count goes to nothing in two. Sunlight in the face of Cade Fisher as he gets his sign, checks the runner at first. And the pitch hits sharply, just foul. Passed a diving Luke Heyman at first base. Wasn't it especially hard? Heyman made a run at it, but couldn't come up with it in foul territory. Heyman at first because Caglione started on the mound, the normal defensive first baseman Caglione, limited to DH the rest of the way. Stretch and the pitch. Swing and a miss. Got him with another breaking ball. Beloso really struggling to pick up the pitch from Cade Fisher. That strikeout for Fisher is his first, and there's two gone now here in the third. The breaking ball. Beloso way off balance with that pitch. Swept across the plate and away from Beloso. Fisher a chance to get out of the inning with no damage done. Runner at first, two gone, and here is Dylan Cruz. First pitch to him is high and wide. Flied out to the warning track and right in the first inning. Walked to knock in a run and came around to score a run in the second inning. Now been on base in all 71 games for LSU this year and the last four last year. 75 game on base streak for him. Swing and a miss. And that's how his career is going to end as he prepares himself to be drafted. One or thereabouts in the draft coming up next month. Yeah, depends on what you need. Do you need a pitcher? Then it's probably his teammate Skeens. Next pitch is outside. It's so hard to tell in these situations. You don't ever really know it. Baseball's draft is sometimes much harder to predict than you would, say, the NFL or the NBA. That ball is lined in a right field. That's going to be a base hit. Played nicely by Evans, and he fires back in to hold the runner at second. But Cruz just continues to be a production machine right to the final game of his LSU career. First and second now with two down. Yeah, when you talk about first or third in the Major League Baseball draft, either way, Dylan Cruz is about to have a very nice windfall come his way. And playing his last game in an LSU uniform is Kevin O'Sullivan's going to make a pitching change. Well, he's got a... Very big right-handed bat coming up with two men on base, and he's got a right-hander warming up in the bullpen. We told you that Kate Fisher was in a situation where he threw a lot of pitches in game one of this series, so that probably was about the end of the line. He's going to go to Slater here, and Slater, a guy who has pitched on back-to-back days, didn't pitch yesterday, but will get an opportunity here to come in and try to turn things off in this top half of the third. 
While Slater warms up, we'll take a timeout. LSU leads at 6-2 here in the third inning. You're listening to the Men's College World Series on the Westwood One NCAA Radio Network. Ray Maliotti here for eBay Motors. Okay, easy now. You're teaching your kid how to parallel park. Ouch! <laughs> Turns out he likes to do it by feel. Don't worry, eBay Motors has bumpers, trunk lids, license plate holders, and headlights. <laughs> They've got lots of headlights. When you need parts, get it right the first time with eBay Guaranteed Fit. When you see the check, you know that part's going to fit. eBay Motors, let's ride. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. Enter to win two tickets to the 2024 NCAA Men's College World Series. Experience the greatest show on dirt with the best seats in the house. Enter now at NCAA.com slash CWS. So, here in the third inning, already the third pitcher of the evening for the Florida Gators. And they trail this one by a score of 6-2. They're turning the keys to the car over to Ryan Slater. Appearing in his third game in the College World Series. He's thrown two and a third innings in his first two, giving up a couple of earned runs on two hits, two walks, and a strikeout. Is pitched to an ERA of 7.71. On the season, though, 10-1. Started three games this year, through to a 3.68 earned run average, and you've got to expect at this point that they've turned the keys over to him for the foreseeable future. They don't want a batter or two out of him at this point, Kevin. They want him to get them much deeper into this game. No doubt. His his highest pitch count this year, 62 pitches that came back on April 11th, but he threw 56 pitches in the regional against Texas Tech after having pitched in relief two days earlier, got the start, went five scoreless. So this is a guy who is capable of getting you deep into a ball game, and they need him to eat a few innings here. What does he throw? Let's check in with his catcher, B.T. Riopelle. He's going to be 88-92, touching 93, sitting there a little bit. Yeah, he sinks the ball really well, and the slider's his best pitch. He can throw it for, for a strike in any count. Short, more short and tight slider. A uh, harder one, we call him Ryan Slider for a reason. And, uh, yeah, in his changeup, he can throw in there as well. So Ryan Slider comes into the ball game here and probably needs to come up with one against the very dangerous hitter in Tommy White. Runners at first and second, two down here in the third, and LSU already up 6-2. to two. Slater will work from the stretch as he checks the runner at second. First pitch, swing and a miss at a fastball for strike one. He had... A notion that he was going to get a first pitch fastball. Had a notion to try to plant it in the left field for his 25th homer of the year. White seems to come in right after pitching changes, doesn't he? Yeah, he loves first pitch. The one he hit here on Thursday for the walk-off was actually a slider. Now the pitch. Oh, no, laid off no, the slider. No, no. Checked down to first base, and the umpire, Ramon Amendaris, says he did not go. One ball and one strike to count to White. Runners lead away in the 1-1 pitch. Hopped up foul, back up our way. That one, I think, caught the roof. And then trickled down into the deck below us. Hope someone was paying close attention. My 12th one of these, Kevin. Never gotten a ball up here. No, oh, it's been tricky to get into this, into this booth specifically. Here's the stretch and the pitch outside. Back in the Major League days, Turner Field, Brian Jordan, a football player, also a baseball player, hit one into our booth. I caught it with one hand. My hand hurt for at least four innings. And we were way up there. I thought you were going to say four days. (laughs) Here's the pitch. That's ripped foul off the left side. Two balls and two strikes. Everybody's giving me the applause. Hey, you caught it. I'm like, yeah, I did. (laughs) Lay me. (laughs) Well, my partner turned around and said to me, okay, lesson learned. Wait till it stops rolling and pick it up. <laughs> well, that was Bob Euchre's advice as to how to catch a knuckleball, too. <laughs> Runners lead away. Palazzo from second, base cruise from first, and the pitch bounces up there. That was the breaking ball again, the slider, and it was down in the dirt. So the count runs full, and the runners will be off with the pitch now. Full count and two down. 
Chance for two if he can put it in a gap on this 3-2 pitch. Slater has his side. The 3-2. Foul back up our way once again, and they'll do it again at three balls and two strikes. Pretty good sign if you're an LSU fan. Since 2003, when they started the best of three final series, only one time has the losing team scored as many as four runs. That was in 2009. LSU beat Texas. They scored four. LSU scored 11. Hmm. Now the stretch once again. And the 3-2. Hit foul again off the right side. White is a guy who just digs in and digs in and digs in. Transfer from NC State. Hit the fifth walk-off hit in College World Series history for LSU. That's what got them to this spot. Now you're going to get a visit to the mound from BT Riopel. Wherever your golf journey is headed, a PGA professional will help get you there. Find your PGA coach at pga.com slash coach. I, I don't think that's true in my case. <laughs> so you're saying that... Unless the PGA professional says to me, Mr. Graham, please put the clubs away yes. and do not return to the golf course. Or he suggests that perhaps you'd be better off working in the back of the clubhouse, helping them unbox the latest merchandise. Mr. Graham, have you thought about chess? Conference broken up. Riopel back behind the plate in the 3-2. It's softly to shortstop on one hop. It's Rivera. He's up with it and throws to first, and that will do it for LSU in the inning. No runs on one hit. They leave two more. They've stranded six. But as we go to the bottom of the third inning, it's LSU 6 and Florida 2. In the Westwood 1 NCAA Radio Network, this is the Men's College World Series. Our workforce needs work. I'm Holly Robinson Pete. Many of you might not know this, but my 22 year old son has autism. So do I. My name is Kevin Valdez, and my intellectual difference makes me the passionate actor that I am. And I'm Mackenzie Cohen, a Paralympian with a developmental difference. Did you know that 97% of HR professionals say that employees with disabilities perform the same or better than their peers without disabilities? Yet still, the differently abled face so many employment challenges in this country. It is time we start building a workforce that works for all, a workforce that is diverse, inclusive, and equitable for those with intellectual differences. And for those with developmental differences, too. A workforce that recognizes that our greatest strengths lie in our differences. Join us delivering jobs and the Sherm Foundation and creating pathways to one million jobs and leadership opportunities. Please visit deliveringjobs.org. Furnished by the Entertainment Industry Foundation. November, we're best known for the mustache. Well, here's the thing. Men's health deserves support year-round, which is why we're more than a month, more than mustaches. All year-round, we're doing more. We're delivering more research, more treatments, doing more to help men live happier, healthier, longer lives. But we need your support, because the more we can do, the more fathers, brothers, partners, sons we can protect. November, more than a month. Learn more at Movember.com. Furnished by Movember. You can catch every remaining moment of Westwood One's exclusive coverage of the 2023 Men's College World Series for free via the Varsity Network app. Download it now and search for NCAA Championships. Go to the bottom of the third, 6-2 LSU and sophomore Thatcher Hurd from Southern California who began his career at UCLA last year. Now has potential of the national championship in his hands at least for the time being as he works with a four-run lead and he faces the nine-hole hitter Kobe Halter batting from the left side for Florida swing and a miss of the first pitch for strike one I like what I've seen Scott from Thatcher heard he's been aggressive he's found his secondary pitches got good velocity seems to have found that composure Halter a 253 hitter three homers 30 runs batted in Hurd's pitch oh. There's a ball. One ball and one strike. It'll be 9-1-2 and two for Florida here in the third inning. Now in a spot where they have to try to come back after they had grabbed an early lead. 1-1. One, one. A pie, ball two. You said Hurd pitched at UCLA last year. Nine games, six starts. 2-0 and oh and a 1.06 earned run average. 
and came here to LSU this year. Went from starter to relief tonight, a starter again. And a swing and a miss at a good fastball. Two and two. You can see what they like about him, though. Explosive fastball, able to locate, breaking stuff continues to progress. He's going to be a good one. Got a relief win over Oregon State on June 4th in the Baton Rouge Regional. This ball lifted in the air to deep left center field. That's trouble. Dylan Cruz back on the run, and he makes the catch. A leaping catch as he banged into the fence and hung on. What a play by Dylan Cruz going straight back, leaping up, and holding it in to Rob Halter. Two gone now here in the third as his teammates salute him from the dugout with their caps in the air. And complicating matters for Dylan Cruz is that as he turned when he got out to the wall, he's right into the sun. So he's not looking in the sun, then has to turn, locate the ball in the sun, and make the catch. Really nice play. First pitch swinging for Kerland, and he lifts one high in the air to shallow center field. Guess who's there? It's Cruz, and he makes the catch, I don't know, about 25 feet behind the infield or about 150 feet from where he just was. All he has done is just run basically from one end of the stadium to the other, and Cruz, as they start to bow to him from right field in the bleachers, he's everywhere right now. It's like the Roy Kent of LSU. He's here, he's there, he's everywhere. The player of the year in college baseball playing in his final game in an LSU uniform. His team on top, 6-2 here in the third. And Langford is responsible for the two Florida runs, stands in now with two outs and the base is empty. Looks at a ball down low. Cruz just acknowledged the fans out in the bleachers with a little wave. Stretch and the pitch to Langford is down low. We got to spend a little bit of time with him on Friday before this series started. Just strikes you as such a level-headed young man who seems very ready mentally for what he's about to embark on. Now the pitch, way outside. You get the impression that Thatcher heard after watching that long ball at the bat of Langford wants no part of this guy. This has been a very carefully pitched at bat. If you'd like to jump across the plate and swing at one in the other batter's box, feel free. First player with three 400-foot home runs in the Men's College World Series. Outside, ball four. And he misses with ball four. They wanted that pitch, but again, Heard was being more than just a little bit cautious as Langford continues to just get on base one way or another. He's aboard with a two-out walk. Eight in a row had been retired before that walk, and Caglione with a chance to help get himself off the hook here. He only lasted an inning and a third on the mound, responsible for all six LSU runs. First pitch to him, swing and a miss. Kind of screwed himself into the ground on that breaking ball. Nothing in one. And you've seen nothing but velocity. If you've been watching Thatcher Hurd in this inning, he dropped that 79-mile-hour breaking ball in at the knees of Caglione. I think he kind of knew he was going to be aggressive at the plate and use that against him. Now the 0-1. High and outside of the fastball, one ball and one strike. Caglione, of course, very dangerous. 33 home runs on the year, two of them here yesterday. Florida could use a long ball right now. Hurts pitch, breaking ball, drops in there for a strike once again. This time with his bat on shoulder, it's one ball and two strikes. It's been the difference from the first inning on for Thatcher Hurd, the ability to locate those secondary pitches. LSU fans standing now. They want the strikeout. A one-two pitch. Hit him. Came inside and hit him. And that's going to put two men aboard now with two out. And give an opportunity to Rivera. There's a long way to go in this game. And one way to cough up a four-run lead very quickly is to offer free bases. It's one of the reasons that LSU has been able to be so effective in this. They've had free base opportunities. Well, two offered here in the third. And Rivera, who has struggled mightily in this College World Series, is going to have to wait a minute and visit to the mound coming with Thatcher Hurd as the bullpen is up and going for LSU. Left-handed activity, it's Griffin Herring throwing down there. He's got Griffin Herring down there. He's got Cooper also for later on in this ball game, you would assume. 
He has money who is pitched on back-to-back days, and then the elephant in the room. By the way, that elephant in the room, there's some cameras down low. Paul Skeens has been doing some stretching and warming underneath the stadium here. I don't think it's going to be a surprise to anybody if he gets into this ball game. The question is, if he does come in, how much does he have? And how much are they willing to let him go? That's the other question. Part of a job of a coach in college is to be the voice of reason when the player doesn't want to be reasonable. We talked to Skeens. He doesn't want to necessarily be reasonable. He wants to go. But if you're the head coach or the pitching coach, your job is to try to temper his enthusiasm with the eye on the future. So here is Rivera. Josh Rivera with two on and two out. First pitch is in for a strike. Rivera's got two home runs in this College World Series. He's hit 19 on the year. He was called out on base runner interference in his first at bat back in the first. Hurd's ready in the 0-1. Up and in with a curveball. One ball and one strike. Just two for 13 against LSU pitching. So Rivera's had a hard time finding the range against these arms for the Tigers. Deep in that right-hand batter's box. Had the pitch on the way to him. There's a breaking ball in there for a strike. Rivera gave up on it. But there's that command you're talking about, Kevin. And now, Hurd is ahead one and two. And those in purple and gold in the outfield are standing in unison once again. Thatcher Hurd. The one-two pitch. Fastball and a called third strike. He struck him out. Rivera watched it go by at 95, and Hurd is out of this third inning, stranding a pair of runners. No runs, no hits, two men left. We are going to the fourth inning here in Omaha. It's 6-2 LSU. You're listening to the Men's College World Series on the Westwood One NCAA Radio Network. Next up, straight talk from Doug. Ever notice that saying no offense is offensive? Like, no offense, but you're overpaying for your wireless. See? Offensive. That's the Straight Talk talking. Get unlimited plans as low as $35 a month from Straight Talk and America's most reliable 5G network. Available at Walmart and Walmart.com. On the $35 plan, first 10 gigabytes data at high speed, then 2G speeds. Refer to the latest terms at StraightTalk.com. Based on most first place ranking, root metrics, second half, 2022 assessments of 125 metros. Experiences vary, not an endorsement. Here at the Almond Joy Factory, where tropical vibes abound, we use soft, fresh-tasting coconut. The crunchiest almonds and delicious chocolate candy. Ah, but do you know what our most important ingredient is? Sometimes you feel like a nut. Sometimes you don't. Almond Joy's got nuts and something even way better than that. Yes, Almond Joy is made with almonds and chocolate. At Simply Safe, we've designed award-winning home security with advanced sensors, HD cameras, and now this 24/7 lifeguard protection, only from Simply Safe. Now, monitoring agents can see and speak to intruders through our new indoor camera to help stop crime in real time and for fast police response. Get 20% off any new system with Fast Protect monitoring at simplysafe.com/radio. Advanced home security, 24/7 professional monitoring for less than a dollar a day. There's no safe like Simply Safe. Third and deciding game of the College World Series Championship Series. Florida had all the momentum coming in. They had a 2-0 lead, but somebody forgot to tell LSU that this thing was over. They put up a six spot, and they now have a four-run advantage as we go to the fourth inning, Kevin. And you start looking at the way the pitching is breaking down, and it looks like it's breaking very nicely for LSU. Not to say they wouldn't like to add some more runs. No, they look, they'd look. they be happy to put 24 up as Florida did yesterday with Trey Morgan stepping in to start off this fourth inning. Swings and fouls the first offering from Ryan Slater off to the left and out of play. Morgan struck out swinging in the first, sacrifice fly, driving in a run in that six-run second inning. The 0-1 to the left-hander Morgan lifts that one foul. Off to the left behind the Florida dugout and quickly nothing and two. Dugas and Jobert to follow in this retooled LSU lineup. Jay Johnson shaking things up a little bit after the 20 run loss yesterday. The 0-2 and a breaking ball missed wide of the zone. One ball two strikes to Trey Morgan. 
Morgan waiting. Slater into the wind, and the one-two pitch skips in the dirt, bounces across home plate, two and two. Sunfield still in left. It is bright sunlight that Tyler Shulnut is having to deal with in left. The infield completely covered in shadows now at 7.30 local time. The 2-2. Morgan lifts it foul off to the left once more and into the seats. Something very serene about the freight train going by off in the distance beyond left field as well at its slow pace. Beautiful night. Everything just kind of leisurely tonight. As this one caroms off the pitcher, Slater it rolls right to first base into the glove of Heyman, who tags the bag for the out. It'll be a 1-3 put out, but it's really a kick and a put out. Heyman happened to be in the right spot after it caromed off Slater and trickled right to the bag at first. I am here to tell you that just about every odd play in this College World Series in some way involves Trey Morgan. That one was a painful way to get it out. Ryan Slater kind of shaking out that right foot that ended up being the deflector. Training staff have taken a couple of steps out, but they retreat now back into the dugout as Slater appears ready to go. Gavin Dugas hoping to take advantage, and... Then we've got a little bit of a motion start, and Slater stops. And I don't think that foot is feeling good. He's now back behind the mound, and that's going to prompt a visit from the athletic trainer, Jarrett Schwein, who's on his way out with Kevin O'Sullivan to talk with Ryan Slater. The bullpen is quiet right now, but if they have to make an injury replacement, obviously whoever comes in will have however long they need to get loose. But that line drive off the foot, of Slater he thought he was okay started to go into his motion and then felt it as he started to plant and backed off the mound before he threw the pitch well Tyler Nesbitt popped right up stretched his arm a couple of times on a pole and now he is up and firing that was immediately following that I'm okay I'm okay wait a minute maybe I'm not okay well he's limping around a little bit now behind the mound he's on the grassy spot behind the mound before you get to the bag at second base and continuing to lift that leg up they're going to give him a couple of practice throws here just to see how he feels planting he's going to be driving but then planting on that right foot and it was the plant that threw him off on the first motion well he feels okay got it planted then twisted so he's plant that on the rubber comes around with it, and seems to feel okay now. Kind of hopped a little bit after delivering that last warm-up pitch. He's well, throwing it not too, so. And it's when he puts all that weight, it gets into his motion, he plants that foot, puts all his weight on that foot, and then twists around. He's going to try to stay in there. We'll see how aggressive Gavin Dugas is in this at-bat. you got to believe Slater is going to try to get one over the plate. It's a 1-0 and count. Well, it is Nesbitt who is warming in earnest right now, and Purnell is up now as well. Two balls, no strikes. Missed inside and tight. 2-0. and oh. Slater working quickly. The 2-0 pitch popped him up. Right side of the infield, foul territory. Heyman in foul ground at first makes the catch, and there's two away. Nice recovery by Ryan Slater to work around a really tough hitter. What will bear watching is if he gets out of this inning, Gets back into the dugout, does that foot stiffen up? We may not see Slater after this inning, assuming he's able to pitch his way out of the inning. That would end up changing a lot. Already three pitchers have been on the mound for Florida, and we're in the top of the fourth inning with LSU up 6-2. to two. Braden Jobert, the batter, and the left-handed hitter, watches that one skip in the dirt for ball one. E.T. Ryapel track down that errant ball and throw it back towards the Florida dugout as Joe Bear, who has singled twice tonight, both in the second inning. Out in front, 1-0. Big cut and a miss for the left-hander. Came up empty on the breaking ball, and it's 1-1. A lot of baseball left to be played here. Taglione started. Fisher in relief. Now Slater. And the 1-1 from Slater to Joe Bear. Low with the breaking ball, two and one. Still just the top of the fourth inning, a 6-2 LSU lead playing 
for their seventh national championship, the 2-1. And a strike, 2-2. Two and two. That is not a pitch that has been a strike tonight for Billy Van Rapphorst. High and away from the left-hand hitter. Two balls, two strikes, two out. The pitch lined down the right field line, carrying well into the corner and off the fence. On his way to second is Jobert. The throw is late, and a two-out double for Braden Jobert, his third hit of the night. He's in scoring position in the fourth. He hit that ball hard. If he had lifted it at all, it was out, but that was just kind of a spinner. It stayed up, and he put a tremendous swing on it. By the way, really good play by Ty Evans to dig it out the way he did. As it turned out, he wasn't going to stop him from getting two, but that was really well played. He got a great bounce in right field. He's got a good arm, and he made it a play at second base. Now a chance for the Tigers to add to that 6-2 lead. There's a late arriving crowd in Omaha, but it is really filled in nicely tonight. About 10 minutes before first pitch, it was about a third empty. Yep. There's Thompson. Pitch is low for a ball. You can feel the weight of the world lift off the shoulders of Jordan Thompson with an RBI single in the second inning. Just his second hit of the series. Runner at second in the 1-0, low and away. 2-0 now to the right-handed hitting shortstop for LSU. Ryan Slater trying to get out of this inning with no damage done, keep it a 6-2 Tiger lead. Toes the rubber on the first base side. Deals the 2-0 pitch. Chopped on the ground, and it goes over Holter at third and into left field. Scoring is Joe Bear on his way to second when the throw comes home is Thompson. 7-2 LSU. The Tigers with a two-out run in the fourth. For all that didn't go Thompson's way here yesterday, that one certainly did. That is... A ground ball out to third, and the last hop hit the seam where the grass and the dirt meet and vaulted right over the shoulder of Kobe Halter. He never had a shot on it, barely got leather on it. And Thompson's got his second base hit and his second RBI of the night. It'll be a single. He'll take second on the throw. He will not care whether it's a single or a double. He is just delighted to have two hits. Now Pearson at the plate, and Josh Pearson takes ball one. LSU continuing to come up with big hits after not being able to come up with big hits the first couple of games of this series. Pearson fouled away. Despite that, they won in the 11th on Saturday night. But entering play tonight, they had left 30 men on base in 20 innings. Left them loaded in the second when they scored six tonight. So even in a big inning, they left more out there. When you lead the country in on-base percentage, you're going to get base runners. Pearson looks at ball one. One ball, two strikes. On Pearson, reached on a fielder's choice and scored in the second. Fouled out to third in the third. Crowd really going here in Omaha. The one ball, two strike pitch to Pearson. Fouled up the right field line. In a lot of ways, you might as well be in Baton Rouge right now. This feels like Alex Box right now. Everybody chanting, everyone in purple. There is a small Florida contingent, but it has been drowned out by the purple and gold, both by sound and by wardrobe. One ball, two strikes to Pearson. And he lines this one to right. That ball is well hit. Evans going back. It is gone. Fourth home run of the year for Josh Pearson. And the LSU Tigers are roaring in Omaha. A two-run bomb for Josh Pearson. And a 9-2 LSU lead. Some of the home runs we saw yesterday, Kevin, were these outrageously high punts that were guided by the wind. This one went 391 feet, and it did it in the blink of an eye. He just murdered that ball. A line shot into the stands and right. 24-4 losers yesterday. 9-2 leading in the top of the fourth tonight. 
Here's Alex Malazzo. A liner to right for a base hit for Malazzo. He's been on three times tonight. Two walks and now a single. And back to the top of the order. In Cade Beloso. And Cade Beloso is going to face a new Gator pitcher. It'll be the fourth Florida pitcher in four innings. And the championship series has derailed for the Gators. Just like it derailed yesterday for LSU that got us here tonight, this one has come unglued for Florida. They've got some time to come back in, but LSU right now, Kevin, showing no signs of stopping. Back to the bullpen. Fourth Florida pitcher coming on while he warms up. We'll take a quick timeout with LSU up 9 to 2. You're listening to the Men's College World Series on the Westwood One NCAA Radio Network. Shop the best deals of the summer now at Lowe's. Save up to an additional $1,000 on select major kitchen appliances. And for a limited time, save up to $3,165 on select four-piece LG kitchen suites. Plus, save on hanging baskets of annuals. Right now, get two for just $15. Lowe's knows home improvement. Offers valid for 628. Appliance savings vary based on purchase amount. Hanging basket offer in-store only and excludes Alaska and Hawaii. Actual plant size and selection varies by location. Exclusion supply. See Lowe's.com for details. Stay up to date with Westwood One Sports by following us on Twitter. In-game highlights, direct links to listen to live games, behind-the-scenes photos, and more. It's all just a click of the follow button away. That's Westwood One Sports on Twitter. For comparative purposes, yesterday was 8-3 going into the sixth inning in a game that ended 24-4 Florida. LSU is actually outpacing the Gators in their record-breaking game from yesterday with a 9-2 lead as the Gators bring on Tyler Nesbitt, their fourth pitcher, to try to deal with the top of the order, two out and a runner at first, three in in the fourth inning. Tyler Nesbitt also has starting experience this year. He started three games, but his total output of innings for the year in his 10 appearances is 21 and a third. So you look at this thing right now and you say, okay, how much longer do we have with him? Who is behind him right now? You're thinking about that and you realize, wow, we're going to run out of innings here in terms of not only trying to come back from runs, but potentially in arms that we can trot out onto the mound. Well, we were talking about this during the break while the pitching change was occurring. It changes how LSU approaches a potential Paul Skeens outing. You're up seven runs right now. There is no reason to risk even slightly the overuse of one of the most valuable arms in baseball in a game that might be out of hand by the time you need it. I don't think there's any doubt about that. I'm sure he's still continuing to stretch and get ready because you never know what's going to happen. But I'll tell you what, a little bit more relief, I would imagine, in that LSU dugout not to have to make that decision if this trend continues. Here's Cade Beloso. First pitch from Nesbitt, a breaking ball for a strike on the inner half to the left-handed hitting Beloso, who struck out swinging in the third, was hit by a pitch with the bases loaded in the second, also hit in the first. The 0-1, low and in, and it's 1-1. One and one. You can see why Beloso gets hit. He really crowds the front edge of that left-hand batter's box, and he's a big dude. One ball, one strike. Runner bluffs a go and a wave and a miss at a high breaking ball. One ball, two strikes now on the six foot, 230 pound Cade Beloso. Nesbitt, one strike from getting out of the inning. 9 2 LSU, the 1 2 pitch. Beloso watched that one all the way into the glove of Ryapel and ended up low, 2 and 2. Nesbitt checking the pitch com on his arm, getting the call. Rocks and fires the 2-2, breaking ball low and wide, 3-2. and two. Runner will be moving with two out. Malazzo at first, Beloso at the plate, Cruz on deck, 9-2 Tigers. National championship in the balance tonight. 
The three-two pitch runner goes and Beloso loops this one into right field. That'll drop in for a base hit. Malazzo on his way to third. They're going to wave him around third. Here comes the throw. It's cut. The throw home is wide and scoring on the play is Malazzo. Malazzo, as he leapt over the equipment and the catcher, scoring at home is now writhing in pain off towards the LSU dugout as he landed it looked like he rolled his ankle leaping across the area to score from first Malazzo in a heap off to the right side of the plate towards the LSU dugout grabbing his ankle where he leapt and landed it's a weird spot right now if you're BT Riopelle because he was asking the umpire, can I go over and tag him? Did he touch the plate? You got a guy who's writhing in pain with his, the staff down and attending to him, and obviously you feel for him. And I'm telling you right now that Florida is asking whether or not they can go apply a tag here. Did he touch the plate? Because clearly that run would not count, and that would be the end of the inning. They're talking it over right now with Billy Van Rapphorst, but you really feel right now for Malazzo, got his teammate Beloso down on one knee. Everybody trying to send good thoughts, but he was writhing as soon as he hit the ground. Home plate umpire is over to check this out as well. Malazzo is now in a seated position, surrounded by the athletic training staff, both of LSU and the in-house staff that supplied in Omaha, some of the best trainers in the Omaha area, whether from Creighton, whether from just the Omaha area, some trainers who've been with professional basketball teams in the area, all a part of this. He is going to be well taken care of as they lift him up, putting absolutely no weight on his left leg. Alex Malazzo is going to leave this field and leave this game with no weight being put on that left ankle. And as he leapt over the equipment and the catcher in the home plate area that he came down on that leg and it buckled yeah i have a feeling this this may not be good news for the trip back to baton rouge it's going to be in some sort of protective device and that has the possibility as always that that might not be a sprain that could be broken the fortunate thing for lsu is that they have two very capable catchers we saw hayden travinsky yesterday he struggled with the plate in this series but is good receiver of the baseball he's already got the gear on here's dylan cruz now at the plate the run does count no one was tagged he did touch home plate a 10-2 lead for lsu and dylan cruz takes strike one the festivities had ramped up that injury certainly tamped down the excitement the 0-1 Cruz on the ground to the shortstop Rivera, picks it up, throws across in time, and Dylan Cruz is retired for the second time tonight. The Tigers are done in the fourth, but not before they score four more runs. And through three and a half in Omaha, it's LSU 10, Florida 2 from the Westwood 1 NCAA Radio Network. This is the Men's College World Series. After my father was on a ventilator for 20 days due to COVID, he had so many medications. It really was daunting. According to the National Institutes of Health, 30% of hospital admissions in older adults are drug-related, like taking meds at the wrong time. Hero simplifies medication management. I'm so, so thankful that something like this exists. It holds up to 10 different medications. It's all on an app, and you can share that app with a caregiver so I can make sure that he got his meds. Is he missing a dose of his meds? Hero Health's Smart Pill Dispenser alerts and delivers pills with the push of a button. It is really so easy to use and a literal lifesaver. Try Hero Health risk-free for 30 days. Get free contactless delivery. Call 800-420-7550. 800-420-7550. That's 800-420-7550. Hero. Medication managed. I'm Dr. Miller, a dentist and a volunteer for Dental Lifeline Network. DLN is a nonprofit that has helped me literally change the lives of people in my community through the Donated Dental Services Program. DLN asked dentists to volunteer to see just one of the many patients in need each year. If you're a dentist or know a dentist, please share this information. Like me, they can make a real difference in someone's life. DLN makes it easy. Go to willyouseeone.org to learn more. This message furnished by Dental Lifeline Network. 
as expected, new catcher in the ball game for the LSU Tigers. Alex Malazzo is gone for the night and for the season. Hayden Travinsky taking over behind the plate in this final game of the year with LSU up 10 to 2 going to the bottom of the fourth inning as Thatcher heard in his 11th start back on the hill facing first up BT Ryapel. Left-handed hitting catcher for the Florida Gators flew out to center his first time up and the first pitch is wide of the zone for ball one. Ryapel, Heyman, and Evans here in the Florida fourth and the Gators need to find some offense. Shift is on, three infielders to the right of second base with Ryapel at the plate in the 1-0. Breaking ball misses high, 2-0 to Ryapel. One of the areas in which professional baseball still differs from college is the shift outlawed in the professional ranks, not so in college. Two balls, no strikes to Ryapel. Trying to go to the left away from the shift, and he fouls it away, two and one. And again, what you're doing here is if somebody decides they're going to hit away from the shift, you're taking away all of their strength, you're taking away what they do best, but Tell you what, you need base runners down eight. Two balls and a strike. And Ryapel lines it right into the shift. And the second baseman there to make the catch, Jordan Thompson, who had come over from short, was playing the second base spot. And because he was shifted over, he makes the catch for out number one. Precisely what we were just talking about. Well, that's a base hit without the shift. And it's one of the reasons why the shift was taken out in professional baseball in an effort to ramp up offensive opportunities. It has worked. Luke Heyman at the plate. Back to a traditional defense now. As Heyman, the right-hand hitter, bends away from a called strike, and it's nothing in one. Thatcher heard the right-hander on the hill for the LSU Tigers. Scott mentioned it earlier, spent his first year in collegiate baseball with UCLA as he misses high but he wanted to be a catcher Acolanes High School where he had his first three years of high school ball wanted to be a catcher Arizona was his dream school he'd been working as a catcher trying to work his way up but he went to an Arizona camp to be a catcher the one ones lifted in the air shallow center field Cruz didn't see it right away but he's got plenty of time to come in and make the catch for the second out so he gets his work in, and he goes with his good buddy Tommy Splain to an Arizona camp. Tommy Splain, by the way, is the Arizona catcher right now. Jay Johnson was the head coach at Arizona at the time. In comes Thatcher Hurd. They're fooling around, and Thatcher Hurd throws a slider at catcher camp. Jay Johnson says, as soon as I saw him throw a slider, I'm like, this guy's a pitcher. And all of a sudden, the world changed for Thatcher Hurd as Ty Evans steps in and a swing and a miss. For strike one, his last game at Acolanes High School, he's a junior, caught his brother Logan for six innings and took off the catcher gear, got the save. But that same night, California shut down. The lockdown hit for COVID. Learned to pitch from his brother during the lockdown. They moved to Manhattan Beach as the pitch is outside for a ball for his senior year. Pitched full-time for the first time as a senior at Miracosta High School in california got the attention of ucla went there pitched well as scott mentioned earlier and now at lsu pitching for a chance at a national championship and out in front one and two with a beautiful breaking ball that evans was out in front of swung through it and it's one ball two strikes on evans see the slider you see the curve ball and you know the catchers don't throw 94 you know unless your name is benito santiago exactly. one ball two strikes bases cleared two out the pitch to evans Tried the fastball, and he just missed wide of the zone. Two balls, two strikes, 10-2 lead for LSU. So Jay Johnson was looking at a catcher, got his starting pitcher a few years later at a different school. The 2-2 popped up. Left side of the infield, White in foul ground, makes the catch, and a 1-2-3 fourth inning for Thatcher Hurd. Best catcher camp Jay Johnson ever <laughs> held at Arizona. 10-2 lead for LSU. You're listening to the Men's College World Series on the Westwood One NCAA Radio Network.
All right, class, pay attention. It's the NCAA Championships. Welcome to Fandom 101. We'll cover the tools of the trade that hype our student athletes to deliver it all on the biggest stage. Lesson one, whether it's a jersey, body paint, or your lucky overalls, dress for success. Two, let them know you're here. And three, work together. NCAA Championships. Attendance is encouraged. Passion is mandatory. Get your seats today at NCAA.com slash tickets. Class dismissed. You can host the best backyard barbecue. You can find a professional on Angie to make your backyard the best around. Connect with skilled professionals to get all your home projects done well. Inside to outside. Repairs to renovations. Get started on the Angie app or visit Angie.com today. You can do this when you Angie that. John Bishop bound here on the field at Charles Schwab Field, 10-2 in favor of LSU. You heard Kevin talking last half inning about Thatcher Hurd, and not only did he develop late as a pitcher, he also took all of his NIL money that he received from LSU in his first year and donated it all to the food bank of Baton Rouge. According to the folks at the Baton Rouge Food Bank, it paid for over 30,000 pounds of food, and all future NIL earnings will also be going to local charities. Herd's comment was, I'm lucky enough I never had to worry about where my next meal is coming from. I needed to help others in need. By the way, as we get ready for this inning, Paul Skeens has just entered the bullpen. And the line drive up the middle, it caroms off the second base umpire Jeff Head. It'll be a base hit for Tommy White as he lined the first pitch he saw from Tyler Nesbitt right off Jeff Head at second base. Yeah, you don't see that one every day. Jeff Head, who was working behind the plate yesterday for all 28 of those runs, couldn't quite get out of the way of that one just on the outfield grass. That's embarrassing for any umpire. He was not in the wrong spot. He just was in the wrong spot at that very moment. So Tommy White at first with a Jeff Head helped base hit. Trey Morgan at the plate. And the left-hander looks at ball one outside. Mentioned it, Paul Skeens during that last break, walking down to the LSU bullpen in a 10-2 lead. The 1-0 inside, ball two, 2-0. Two and oh. Was an opportunity for the fans out near the right field bullpen to salute him. He had his blue cooler in his hand and his backpack over his shoulders like he always does before a start. The 2-0, Morgan lifts this one to the air to left. Shelnut on the way back, gets shy of the track, makes the catch. And there is out number one in the fifth. We'll pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is the Westwood One NCAA Radio Network, your home for the national championships. lead for the LSU Tigers. One out, one on. Gavin Dugas at the plate. And Dugas is hit by the pitch. Breaking ball came up high and tight. Dugas trots to first. White advancing to second. And another free pass issued by the Florida Gators. That has become, unfortunately for Florida, a common theme. That's the third hit batsman. Four walks tonight, seven free bases in a game you already trail 10-2. to two. And now Braden Jobert has had the hot bat as another chance. And Jobert oh. looks at ball one. He has a single, a run scored, a single, and a double with a run scored tonight. Three for three for Jobert. And the left-hander awaits the 1-0 pitch. And over the outside corner for a strike. With those three hits, now eight hits in the College World Series. He is four for nine against Florida pitching. He's got White at second, Dugas at first, and time called. Ten runs, 12 hits, no errors, LSU. Two runs, two hits, both in the first inning for Florida. The 1-1. One, one. A little dribbler on the infield, charging his halter from third. The only play is the first. It's off the bag, but the tag applied by Luke Heyman 
on the leg of Joe Bear as he came towards the first base bag to get the out. It's essentially a swinging bunt with two out and a nice play made by Heyman to get the tag on to retire Joe Bear. There's another guy who's had a redemption night tonight, much like his entire team in this 10-2 ball game. And once again, Thompson will get an opportunity. He's got two more sitting out there for him. Thompson drove in a run in the second and in the fourth. Runners at second and third with two out. And Thompson takes a breaking ball for a strike. Tyler Nesbitt on in relief. Thompson two for three tonight. After struggling mightily throughout the series. Pitch inside for a ball. One for 30 in Omaha coming into play. 14 strikeouts, but two for three tonight. Two RBIs and a run scored. Outside, ball two. And the LSU team chance beginning to echo through this ballpark. Every section you look, you find purple and gold tonight. Thompson rifles that foul down the third base line. It's as if the Florida fans could not extend their hotel stay, but LSU fans were more than happy to stay where they could to be here one more night because it is all LSU at Omaha on the scoreboard and in the stands. 10-2 Tigers. The pitch is low. 3-2 to Thompson. First base open. Runners at second and third. 10-2 lead for LSU. Les Florida figures out a way to mount any kind of a comeback soon. This has a chance to be a nonstop LSU love fest on the way to a championship. The 3-2 pitch, reaching for it, and he pops it to center. Langford broke back, now has to hustle in. He'll make the catch. Good range in center field. We have two excellent center fielders in this game, Wyatt Langford and Dylan Cruz, and Langford squeezes it for the final out of the top of the fifth. LSU does not score. They leave two. As we move to the bottom of the fifth inning, 10-2 Tigers from the Westwood One NCAA Radio Network. This is the Men's College World Series. The strength of America, our values, our way of life, hasn't just been won on the battlefield. It's won every day in our communities when we come together, extending hands of compassion, service, and hope to those who need it most. For over 100 years, the American Legion has been strengthening communities across our nation by providing life-saving help and support to our veterans and neighbors during times like we're facing today. It's what the Legion's all about. From blood drives, to distributing food, from responding to emergencies and protecting the most vulnerable among us. Our mission is making America's community stronger. We are one family and therefore we care. We are the American Legion, veterans strengthening America. To learn how you can help, visit legion.org. When the forgotten poor are in need of healing, they wait for a ship unlike any other. Mercy Ships, a floating hospital staffed by volunteers, heroes of mercy who donate their time to save lives. Every human has the right to have a place at the table of the human race. If you could just see the smiles that you get when lives have been changed, then it would make it all worth it. To learn more about Heroes of Mercy, go to mercyships.org. Bottom of the fifth inning, LSU 10, Florida 2. Tyler Shelnut, Colby Halter, Cade Curland, 8-9-1 in the order for Florida against starter Thatcher Hurd in line for his eighth win of the season. If he can get through this inning, Shelnut will step in, called out on strikes his first time up, and he lifts it into shallow left on the first pitch. Jordan Thompson out to make the catch, and there's one pitch and one out. In the bottom of the fifth, Kevin Kugler and Scott Graham in our Granger broadcast booth at Charles Schwab Field in Omaha. For the ones who get it done, Granger offers professional grade supplies and solutions made for every industry and backed by product experts. Call, click Granger.com, or just stop by. 10 2 lead for LSU. One out, 67 pitches 
For Thatcher Hurd is Colby Halter, who popped out to center in the third, steps up. First offering to the lefty Halter, taken for strike one. Halter 5 for 18 in the College World Series. 0 for 1 tonight. He struck out six times. Nothing and one the count. Big wave and a miss. Oh, he pulled the string on a 78-mile-an-hour breaking ball. And Halter spinning like a top in that left-hand batter's box, down two strikes. And a spin rate on the pitch approaching 2,900. Ooh. No balls, two strikes. Alter fights that one off foul, off to the left and out of play. Thatcher Hurd moving into LSU folklore if he can pitch his team to a national championship tonight. Is this what every player dreams about? Absolutely. No balls, two strikes. The pitch, swing and a miss. Breaking ball, got him fooled. Down on strikes, the fifth strikeout for Hurd. Two up and two down in the Gator fifth. Not only is he pitching well, but he is controlling, as you said, something that he couldn't do early in the game. He is controlling the off-speed stuff. And right now, he's in complete command, and it certainly does help. They say it's hard to pitch with a big lead. It also makes it easier in this situation to pitch with a big lead. Top of the order, Cade Curlin, breaking ball for a strike. He's over 3,000 consistently on the spin rate with his breaking stuff. In the first inning, it was all over the map. He has found the grip. He's found the control, and it's pacing him to an excellent start. Curlin singled and scored in that first inning. Breaking ball fouled away. Nothing in two. And you can tell by the usage, too. Thatcher Hurd relied heavily on fastballs in that first inning when he couldn't get anything else over but has gone heavy breaking ball now as they're showing a shot of Alex Malazzo back in the LSU dugout with his foot in a boot and wrapped up. No balls, two strikes to Curlin. Fastball outside, did he go? No swing on the appeal to Ramon Armendariz over at first base. That looked close. Cade Curlin fortunate, I think, to have another pitch to look at here. Yeah, I'm going to say that it looked more than close, Kevin. I think it looked like a swing. See if Hurd can fire another one in there. One ball, two strikes to Cade Curlin. Righty versus righty in the pitch. Off speed, cold, strike three. Paints the outside corner. Six strikeouts for Thatcher Hurd. Five innings of two-hit baseball in a 10-2 LSU lead after five. You're listening to the Men's College World Series on the Westwood One NCAA Radio Network. Wesley Financial Group is not a law firm. This story is called The Ugly Truth About Timeshare. If you think you've done your family a favor by buying a timeshare, you need my help. Hello, I'm Chuck McDowell, CEO and founder of Wesley Financial Group. Ten years ago, I started helping folks cancel their timeshare. In the process, started what's now called the timeshare cancellation industry. Timeshare is the only thing that you can buy that you can't tell me how much it's going to cost or when it's going to end. When you buy a timeshare, you give them a blank check to fill out any amount they want for annual maintenance and assessment fees. The crazy thing is, this never ends. Even when you die, your family's now going to be stuck with this burden. Stop the insanity today. Call my office now. If we take you as a client, I guarantee we'll cancel your timeshare or you'll pay nothing. Call for your free information kit. 800-462-3333. That's 800-462-3333. 800-462-3333. Ray Maliazzi here for eBay Motors. You're driving along and some nimrod cuts you off. You hit the horn. <laughs> Jeez, it sounds like a goose in distress. Time to head over to eBay Motors. They have horns for every make and model, not to mention horn pads, steering wheels, wiring, and more. 122 million parts. You can even go for an upgrade. That looks like Mr. Cutoff Man needs a new seat cover. Try eBay Motors, pal. Get the right parts at the right prices. eBay Motors. Let's ride. Four innings away from a national title. Four innings away from LSU claiming their seventh national championship and scott graham a 10-2 lead feels awfully large right now 
It does, and it feels that way because you've got a pitcher on the mound who's getting it done for LSU, and you've got an LSU team that is kind of unrelenting in putting men on base and continuing to try to build this lead. Up 10-2, and it'll be Pearson leading things off. Josh Pearson in the left-hand box. Looks at strike one from Tyler Nesbitt, the fourth pitcher of the night for the Florida Gators. Next pitch, in there for a strike. Nothing in two. Pearson homered his last time up. A line shot into the seats in right. Scored a couple of runs here this evening. And he swings and misses at that pitch and strikes out. So Nesbitt goes downstairs and gets his first strikeout. One away here in the sixth inning. A pretty impressive relief outing for Nesbitt under trying circumstances. An inning in two-thirds, two hits, no runs, strikeout. He's restored a little bit of order as the fourth Florida pitcher. And Travinsky bats for the first time. He cues one off the end of the bat for strike one. Junior out of Shreveport, Louisiana, came on after Malazzo was obviously seriously injured, scoring the most recent run for LSU in the fourth inning. As we said, he's on the bench with a boot right now. And swing and a miss by Travinsky for strike two. Now the pitch, and that one is inside. Hey, Trevinsky on the year, a 356 hitter with 10 homers and 29 runs batted in, but hadn't been seen as much here. Had a, an injury that kept him out of the lineup in Omaha, and he looks at a called third strike, a fastball on the outside corner. Back-to-back strikeouts for Nesbitt, trying to restore some order for Florida here. That's two gone in the sixth inning. Travinsky has just been baffled in this College World Series. He's struggled at the plate now, 0 for 13 with five strikeouts in Omaha. So back to the top of the order. Here is Beloso, officially one for two tonight, but he's been on three times, knocked in two runs, and scored a run in his first ever appearance as a leadoff hitter. He's a graduate student. He's been around a bit. 169th <laughs> career start, first time at the leadoff spot. First pitch to him is down a little bit low. One ball and no strikes. Wind up and the 1-0. That's off the outside corner. Two balls and no strikes. The entire field is in shadow right now. We see the sun that still kind of glinting off the buildings in the distance. Lights will start to take effect soon. There's a ball hammered on the ground. Foul of the first base side. Two and one, the count to Cade Beloso. Earlier this year, had pinch home runs in back-to-back games against Central Connecticut State. Here's the wind and the pitch. That one is lined into right center field. Another base hit for Beloso. He just trots into first base, and he is aboard for the fourth time tonight. A two-out single here in the sixth inning. LSU will just not allow a 1-2-3 inning from their offense tonight. They've had a couple of opportunities to go down in order, but they refused to do so, and now Dylan Cruz with a chance to keep it going. 10 for 25 for Beloso in the College World Series. As we said, here is Cruz. He's got a hit tonight. Tried to check, but went around on the first offering for strike one. He walked, forcing in a run in the second. Ultimately came around to score after that walk. He singled in the third. Right-hander facing right-hander. And the pitch, line into left field. That's a base hit. On a couple of hops, makes it out to Shelma, who fires back in. And once again, the Tigers have something cooking here with two on and two out in the sixth. Cruz has such a refined, flat, even stroke that he is going to progress Prediction-wise, certainly not a scout, but he's going to progress very quickly through a minor league system. This is not going to be someone where six or seven years from now you're wondering whatever happened to him. He's going to be up very quickly in the big leagues. That is a polished, finished product. So now here is White. Chance to strike another blow. And he pops one in the air on the right side in foul territory. Heyman coming over, but that one's going to go into the LSU dugout. And it wasn't even in an area where he could make a reach. It wasn't high enough. Nothing in the one to count to Tommy White. White tonight, two hits. 
One knocked in a run, the other knocked into an umpire. Pitch on the way. Bounce foul up the left side. Mm, that hurt. White's walking that one off. Got him on the instep, I believe, with that foul ball. He's going on a bit of a walkabout. That foul ball going right off the top of his left foot. Training Steph. Trainer came out again. He has had a very busy night as Josh Walker and Tommy White. Go back to the tug. He's not the kind of guy that invites training staff. No. The big old rip in the knee of his pants. He doesn't care. Pitch on the way to him. Bouncer on the ground toward third, and that's wide of the bag and foul. He's still limping around, though. Josh Walker inching closer to those dugout stairs again. Do you need me? Do you need me, Tommy? I would imagine at this point, based upon what kind of a series that Tommy White has had, it would take the Nebraska National Guard to get him out of this game. Yeah, I think so. Here comes the stretch of the pitch. That's low and outside. One ball and two strikes. LSU by eight runs here in the sixth inning. Time getting short for the Florida Gators, who led this game 2-0 in the first. Now the pitch. Hit high in the air. That's the shallow right center field. They are converging on it. The call and the catch made by Wyatt Langford. And that will do it for LSU in the sixth inning. They put up 10 runs tonight. Somehow they still stranded 11. Two men left here in the sixth. We go to the home half of the sixth inning. It's LSU 10 and Florida 2. In the Westwood 1 NCAA Radio Network, this is the Men's College World Series. Science is not an opinion. People come before pipelines. It's not too late to act on climate. No one is above the law. At Earth Justice, we hold these beliefs to be self-evident. As a national legal nonprofit fighting for your right to a healthy environment, we are 150 plus lawyers representing clients free of charge because now more than ever, the Earth needs a good lawyer. No one fights more cases on the environment than Earth Justice. And we win because these are fights we cannot lose. We win for scientists so they can serve at the EPA. We win at the Supreme Court because clean water is for everyone. We win against fossil fuel plants so communities can breathe freely. If you believe what we believe, then help us fight the good fight and help us keep winning by going to earthjustice.org today. That's earthjustice.org. My daughter Brinley is here at St. Jude. Coming here was literally life or death and it was so scary. But St. Jude is fighting for one goal, like this one mission, life. And that gave us hope. We haven't received a single bill from St. Jude, so I really can just focus on what's best for Brinley. Finding cures, saving children. Learn more at stjude.org. Bottom half of the sixth inning, and LSU inching closer to a national championship. They've got a 10-2 lead, and Florida trying to figure out a way to dig out here. With a good part of the order, 2-3-4 and four up, facing Thatcher Hurd. Wyatt Langford responsible for the two Florida runs with a home run. Back in the first, looks at a breaking ball for a strike. Langford also had a walk in the third inning. After going 5-5 five for five here yesterday, with six runs batted in. Pitch to him. Inside. At your herd, if you're curious, 77 pitches right now here into the sixth inning. We've been talking away while we've been away at the break. I'm Jay Johnson. I am riding him for as long as I possibly can. No doubt. He has been in full command since that home run in the first. And this rocket is hit right at the shortstop. But Jordan Thompson takes it chin high. And they found out a way to finally get Wyatt Langford out. Enter to win two tickets to the 2024 NCAA Men's College World Series. Experience the greatest show on dirt with the best seats in the house. Enter now at NCAA.com slash CWS. And if you call now, Kevin Kugler will show you to your seat when yep. you arrive here next June. I'm actually answering the phone right now. <laughs> Here's Cag Leone. 
And the pitch to him is inside for a ball. Hello, yes, we have many for you right behind the post. <laughs> Aguilion has struck out and been hit by a pitch, but that's not what he's going to remember tonight for. Hurd has his side, working from the stretch. And the pitch is high and away. Update on Alex Malazzo from Jacques Doucet, who's the one of the beat writers covering LSU. He talked with Alex's dad, Jimmy. Jimmy Malazzo tells him Alex has a fractured shin. Oh, goodness. Oh. oh no. Next pitch is up high. Will not require surgery, according to Alex's dad, Jimmy. I guess that's good news, but oh my goodness. Yeah. 3 0 the count right now to Caglione. And the fastball's right there for a strike. You wonder what his dog, Buck, is going to be doing now for the foreseeable future because Malazzo loved more than anything else when he wasn't playing baseball to go out hunting with his dog, Buck. If somebody can help him into the deer stand, he can still hunt. I guess. Next pitch is fouled back and out of play. Well, you know what? He likes to fish, so he could be out. At a fishing hole. But he says Buck's got a lot of extra energy. He does. He does. So. Three and two, the count to Caglione. And the pitch to him. Yes, Trying to check, but he went around. The ball down in the dirt, and he is tagged as he tries to run out of the batter's box by the catcher, Travinsky. So a strikeout and the put out by the catcher. Hey, you got yourself two down now here in the sixth inning. They found a hole with Thatcher Hurd to Caglione, and that's that breaking ball inside and breaking in on the hands of the left-handed hitting designated hitter. That's the second time he's come in there with similar results. Seven strikeouts now for Thatcher Hurd in complete command with an eight-run lead, two down, and the base is empty in the sixth. Walk down. And he misses down a little bit low with his first offering to Josh Rivera. Rivera's 0 for 2 on the night tonight. As a team, Florida is two for 19 in this game. After putting up 24 yesterday. Next pitch is high and outside. Isn't baseball funny, Scott? We came into this championship series and the talk was Florida has their pitching lined up the way they want it. And it's going to be LSU that ends up with two quality starts from their starters. Including a guy who had been a starter but became a reliever this year and right now has the championship in his hands and he fires just inside with his next offering. He's now falling behind 3-0 and to Rivera. The new Van Rapport's strike zone has been inconsistent wide tonight. That one looked very close. Bird looks in, the 3-0. Outside ball four. No question about that one. Well wide of the zone, and Rivera gets on base, but Florida's going to need a lot more of that. Base runners needed for the Gators here in the sixth. Now, with a walk, just the second issued by Hurd, we're in the sixth inning of this ball game. Everybody's going to be casting an eye down to the bullpen. And if they look down there right now, they're not going to see the potential number one pick in the draft warming up. The left-hander Riley Cooper is now getting up and warming for LSU here in the sixth inning. BT Ryapel stands in, left-handed hitter, looks at his strike on the inner half. He looks back at Billy Grand Rapport and says, you know, you haven't called that for me back there all night. It has been inconsistent wide tonight, in and out. Ryapel is 0 for 2 on the night. Pitch to him. That one is hit in the air to center field. Cruz got a good jump on it, drifts back underneath. And puts it away, and Florida retired as they strand a base runner here in the sixth inning. We are headed to the seventh, the championship getting closer. LSU 10, Florida 2. You're listening to the Men's College World Series on the Westwood One NCAA Radio Network. Shop the best deals of the summer now at Lowe's. Freshen up your home inside and out with buy one, get one 50% off on select interior and exterior paints and exterior stains via Lowe's gift card rebate. Plus, save big on select patio furniture and accessories with up to 50% off. Lowe's knows July 4th savings. Lowe's knows home improvement. Offers filed through 628. Selection varies by location. While supplies last. More terms and restrictions apply. See Lowe's.com slash rebates for details. 
All right, class, pay attention. It's the NCAA Championships. Welcome to Fandom 101. We'll cover the tools of the trade that hype our student athletes to deliver it all on the biggest stage. Lesson one, whether it's a jersey, body paint, or your lucky overalls, dress for success. Two, let them know you're here. And three, work together. NCAA Championships. Attendance is encouraged. Passion is mandatory. Get your seats today at NCAA.com slash tickets. Class dismissed. Here at the Almond Joy Factory, where tropical vibes abound, we use soft, fresh-tasting coconut. The crunchiest almonds and delicious chocolate candy. Ah, but do you know what our most important ingredient is? Sometimes you feel like a nut. Sometimes you don't. Almond Joy's got nuts and something even way better than that. Yes, Almond Joy is made with almonds and chocolate. Stay up to date on college sports with Westwood Ones this week in the NCAA. From student athlete profiles to rule changes and results from all 90 championships to the latest news, this week in the NCAA covers it all. Listen for it weekends on many of these same stations or listen anytime online at westwoodonesports.com. That used to be your beat for a long time. It did. It did. Then I was booted off the beat. <laughs> Get out, they said. Seventh inning in a 10-2 ball game, and Trey Morgan looks at ball one for Tyler Nesbitt. Ten runs on 14 hits, no errors for LSU. Two runs, just two hits, and no errors for the Florida Gators. Nesbitt's next offering popped in the air on the left side. That is in no man's land near the line, and it is going to fall in for a base hit. Now, they get the ball back in quickly, and Morgan only got a single out of it. But there was no way as three converged on that. It was Bermuda Triangle time right along the left field line. Yeah, you couldn't throw it in a better spot. The problem for Morgan was he didn't exactly scoot out of the batter's box as quickly as he could have. As he's, if he's on a dead run out of the batter's box, he's standing at second base right now. As it is, he's aboard at first and still no one, two, three innings for Florida pitching tonight. Dugas now stands in with a runner on and nobody out. First pitch to him is wide for ball one. Been such a strange series. Eight of the first 14 games were one-run games in this series. The first 14 games together were decided by a combined 29 runs. Next pitch ripped foul down the left field line. In the last two games, we've got three innings left in this one. 28 runs is the deciding number. So everything was a 29, it was 29 runs total in the first 14 games separating the two teams. 28 these last two games. Astounding. Here's the next pitch and a swing and a foul back into the catcher's glove from Dugas. One ball and two strikes. He's been on tonight three times, putting an RBI single and has scored a run. Modest lead at first base for Morgan in the pitch. Breaking ball misses wide. Goss had a 55-game streak of reaching base from February 17th until June 2nd. And the pitch to him fouled off the right side. He also got hit by a pitch tonight. He was number three in the nation in that category this year. That's one that in all honesty, yeah, it's useful, but boy, it hurts. Yeah, do you want to be top three in the nation? Hit 33 times? I don't. No. That's <laughs> 95, 96. In this case, that's 90. Misses inside, and discretion being the better part of Valor, Dugas knifes his body back out of the way of it. Looks like Corbin Burnson's character in Major <laughs> League after he decided to work on ground balls. <laughs> Span and a throw to first base. And diving back in safely is Morgan. It's funny you should mention that because that actually is a little bit of foreshadowing of something that's going to come up with the next batter. See how that worked? I, I like that. Runner goes. The pitch is taken inside. Throw down to second base, and he is. No, they call it ball four. It was inside. So the play down at second base didn't matter, and now you got two men on and nobody out. You could hear Jeff Head making the call at second base, ball four, which had everyone at second base very puzzled as to why 
you were calling a sliding runner at second base ball four. My outer or my safe? What are you saying? Yeah, wait, ball four? What? <laughs> but now it all makes sense. So here's Braden Jobert, Scott. There was foreshadowing. There was foreshadowing. There was. Jobert's got three hits tonight and a couple of runs scored, and the pitch is bounced up there, and the runners are going to advance on a wild pitch. Very easily, in fact, as Ryapel goes back and digs it out for the backstop. So Joe Bear, you told the story yesterday about his dad. His dad at one point found somewhere a little Joe Boo. For those of you who are familiar with Major League, you remember the statue that was in the locker. As the next pitch breaks down low for a ball of Pedro Serrano, mm-hmm. and he believed it's what gave him his powers as a hitter. Ultimately, he turned his back on him to win the game. Correct. But in a very colorful way. After Joe Bear got the Joe Boo, he hit two home runs the first day. Ball hit back off the screen. So I'm wondering now, is that still around somewhere, three hits tonight in the national championship game? It should be. I mean, they brought Joe Boo up in early March. Cade Beloso brought him in, and all of a sudden, Cade started hitting. Javier bounces one foul. Now, Joe Boo was dismissed with malice at the end of Major yes, League. Yes, we cannot say yeah, no. Dennis Haysbert's line from that. You can Google it or YouTube it. As you should. Swing and a miss at a breaking ball. And he flips the bat in the air and turns around to walk back to the dugout as the first out of the inning. Watch out, Joe Boo. <laughs> So now here is Thompson. Listen to the ovation Jordan Thompson is getting. Every LSU fan in this building knows what a tough ride it has been for him in Omaha. Two errors yesterday, struggled at the plate. They're chanting his name. That's terrific. Infield comes in. It gives him a better shot, and he fouls the first pitch back for strike one. He has two RBI singles and a run scored tonight. And Kevin documented it well. This was after just a really, really, really rough time here in Omaha, going one for 30 into tonight. That was the next pitch back, but he was right right on it as he hit it back off the screen. I mean, that is an example of a really cool fan thing to do. Sometimes fans get a bad rap. Fans get criticized. Fans criticize others. But, man, to pick that kid up like that, that's really cool. And I'm sure he's noticed. Here comes the stretch, and the 0-2, swing and a miss. He got him. So back-to-back strikeouts with two men in scoring position as Tyler Nesbitt tries to keep this one right where it is. Give his team at least a swinging chance. Down by eight runs here in the seventh inning. A couple of really good pitches to close out at-bats from Tyler Nesbitt. He's been impressive in his relief outing tonight. That he has. Fourth pitcher of the night for Florida. Came out of the fourth, still here in the seventh. Here's Josh Pearson. First pitch to him is down low and inside. Pearson, a home run in this ball game, and it was a laser shot to right field. Back in the fourth inning. As pitch, pitch, ripped foul up the right side and into the crowd. One ball and one strike to Cal. Not that one early. Good contact, but well fouled. Another guy who's had a tough go of it until tonight. Two-run homer in the fourth, a line drive home run. Now the stretch of the pitch. That one is just outside. Two and one. LSU gunning for a seventh national championship in baseball. Their first since 2009. Right now, they just need nine more outs to get it done. The pitch. That one is outside. And a chance at a little history if they do that, obviously getting a seventh national title. But no team has ever won a basketball national championship and the Men's College World Series in the same year. LSU women, obviously, basketball national champions. Swing and a cue shot foul up the line. Well, their coach is here. Yes. Kim Mulvey just got saluted by the crowd a little while back. 
By the way, just wearing LSU colors, no. No, no, no nothing fancy. Nothing she's got a, she yeah. does have a Mulkey jersey on. Yep. I saw it in the stairwell before the game. You know, she was wearing it, so I saw her too. But she's, she's, uh, she's very boisterous even when she's not coaching. Now the pitch. And missed the outside corner, and they're loaded up. Two walks and a hit in the inning. And a bases loaded situation again for the Tigers. They have had them a plenty, and I think we're going to finally now see a pitching change. As Tyler Nesbitt has done a good job of holding things where they are. However, dot, dot, dot. You have to figure out a way to avoid a base hit here that would continue to grow that lead. And Nesbitt's night will indeed be done, and season will indeed be done, as he is going to walk off. And we're going to see a pitcher that we saw yesterday. We'll tell you about him when we come back. 10-2, LSU in the seventh. You're listening to the Men's College World Series on the Westwood One NCAA Radio Network. Ray Maliazzi here for eBay Motors. So you order a new air filter for your car. You try to install it, but it doesn't fit. So you take a little bit off the sides, but still doesn't fit. Well, you could try to sit on it or get it right the first time with eBay Guaranteed Fit. When you see the check, you know that part's going to fit. Air filters, brakes, headlights, over 122 million parts. Get the right parts at the right prices. eBay Motors, let's ride. Eligible items only. Exclusion supply. Tonight's broadcast of the 2023 Men's College World Series on the Westwood One NCAA Radio Network is intended solely for the private, non-commercial use of our audience. Any reproduction, retransmission, or other use of this broadcast without the express written consent of the NCAA and Westwood One is strictly prohibited. Well, yesterday's ball game, the guy who got the win in a 20-run game was Blake Purnell. He came into the ball game. Got a couple of big ground balls for double plays. Pitched an inning and two-thirds. And since the starter had not made it out of the second inning, the official scorer was able to award him a College World Series victory in yesterday's game. He's a right-hander who has a deceptive delivery. Kind of hides the ball as he hunches his body over and comes sidearm. As Kevin pointed out yesterday, not exactly submarine, but certainly sidearm and to the lower level of sidearm. He's coming into the ball game now for his 17th appearance this year, 2-0 with a 7.20 earned run average in 20 innings of work. Guess what he needs now? He needs a ground ball. Base is loaded, two out. His team down eight runs here in the top of the seventh inning. Absolutely imperative that he keeps Hayden Travinsky hitless in this College World Series because... 10-2 with three innings to go. That's almost impossible. 12-2, 13-2, 14-2. You may as well start engraving LSU's name on the trophy. It's a Florida team that has done a great job this year of flexing their muscle when it's most needed. They've only got nine outs in front of them, so point well taken. And here is Travinsky who struck out looking his first time up. As we mentioned, it has been a struggle here in Omaha for him, 0 for 13 with five punch outs. Bases loaded, two down. Right-hander facing right-hander. The first pitch right. is there for a strike. How to imagine that Blake Purnell's difficult to pick up. And now that we're just about to dust the lights on, this got to be a weird look. Standing in the batter's box. The pitch, a late swing and a miss for strike two. And everything has been difficult for Travinsky at the plate in this College World Series. 0 for 13 in the series with 5 Ks. Purnell quickly ahead, nothing in two. Takes that crouch, fires. That pitch just a little bit high. Travinsky watches it go by, one and two. Purnell was headed to the dugout. He thought this inning was over. Thought he fooled Travinsky. Has to come up with one more good one. He was correct. He fooled Travinsky, but the inning's not over. <laughs> now, the stretch, here's the one, two. Ball down. Oh, wow. That ball's just a little bit low. And again, 
just missing with a 90-mile-an-hour fastball that he thought was perfectly placed. Our track man is showing us it probably was just down out of the zone. Two balls and two strikes. Burnell comes to the set. And the 2-2 pitch. That's low and in. Ball three. So now in a bases loaded situation, you got a full count. He's got to throw a strike. LSU fans are up and encouraging more runs for the Tigers. The stretch, the 3 2. Low ball for he walked him. And that walks in a run. It's 11 2 LSU here in the seventh inning. Patient at bat by Travinsky. Purnell going to feel like he got a little squeezed by. Home plate umpire Billy Van Raphorst on a couple of close pitches, but Travinsky able to stand in there, take those close pitches, and he gets the RBI as a result. So now they're still loaded and a dangerous hitter at the plate in Cade Beloso. Lines the first pitch right at the shortstop Rivera. With two quick steps to his right, he stabs it out of the air, and that will do it for the inning. So the team that can leave them on does it again. They leave them loaded. LSU is stranded 14, but they get a run on one hit, and it is stretch time here in Omaha. LSU 11, Florida 2. From the Westwood One NCAA Radio Network, this is the Men's College World Series. The strength of America, our values, our way of life hasn't just been won on the battlefield. It's won every day in our communities when we come together, extending hands of compassion, service, and hope to those who need it most. For over 100 years, the American Legion has been strengthening communities across our nation by providing life-saving help and support to our veterans and neighbors during times like we're facing today. It's what the Legion's all about. From blood drives, to distributing food, from responding to emergencies, and protecting the most vulnerable among us. Our mission is making America's community stronger. We are one family, and therefore, we care. We are the American Legion, veterans strengthening America. To learn how you can help, visit legion.org. RPG came through the belly of the aircraft. We don't talk about the female combat wounded. These are our daughters and our sisters and our mothers. Wounded Warrior Project came into my life and taught me how to stand back up and get back in the fight. The truth is I think we all have this strength inside of us, but until you're tested, you just don't know what's there. See how Wounded Warrior Project empowers women veterans like Beth by visiting woundedwarriorproject.org slash empowerwomenvets. So we head to the bottom of the seventh inning, a new pitcher for LSU. And as Thatcher Hurd gets congratulations all around from an appreciative dugout for six innings, two hits, two runs, two walks, and seven strikeouts. The new pitcher for the Tigers is a guy we've seen a lot of this year. His 32nd appearance for left-hander Riley Cooper. Five and three with a 4-3 earned run average and three saves. First pitch to him is in for a strike. I only seen him during the year. We've seen a fair amount of him in the College World Series. His fifth appearance here, one and zero, is yet to give up an earned run in eight and two thirds innings. Next pitch to Luke Kamen is outside, one and one. Three innings, forty six pitches in game one of this championship series. He was brilliant. Next pitch lofted in the air to center field. Right there is Dylan Cruz who puts it away, and that's one god here in the bottom of the seventh. We've seen a lot in this series, and we've talked a lot about the talent on the field for both of these teams, and there's a high level of talent on both teams, and there's been a high level of talent throughout this series. I don't know that we've seen more consistent center field defense than the two guys we have in this championship series. Wyatt Langford and Dylan Cruz have been outstanding out in center. That they have. Here's Evans. And Ty Evans fouls one off the right side for strike one. This is an 11-2 to lead for LSU. And they need eight more outs to dogpile here at the Chuck in Omaha. Next pitch lofted in the air to right field. It's well hit. Going back on it, Joe Bear at the track, at the wall. That ball is gone. 
Ty Evans has done it again. His third home run in two days. His fifth home run of the College World Series. Overall number nine on the year. And for the first time since the first inning, the Gators are back on the board. It's an 11-3 game. And it took a Ty Evans home run to get it done, which has been the story for the Gators in this College World Series. It is a record for the most home runs hit in a single men's College World Series. He had tied it with four. He now stands alone with five College World Series home runs. How about that? Here is Shelnut, and he lifts one in the air to center field. Back on his horse is Cruz. He's drifting back to the track, and in dead center field with one foot on the dirt, he puts it away for out number two. How about some of these names that Ty Evans has just erased from the leadership position in the record book? Brian Holiday of TCU. Tommy Mendonca of Fresno State. Mendonca had an amazing College World Series in 2008. Edmund Muth of Stanford. Jeff Jenkins. We saw Jeff Jenkins for a long time in the major leagues. He hit four in 1995. J.D. Drew hit four in three games for Florida State in 1995. All have been by Ty Evans. First pitch to Halter is in for a strike, nothing and one. Tip of the cap. He really has come through here in Omaha. Next pitch is in for a strike. It's nothing and two. Halter turns around and says, excuse me. One plate umpire, Billy Van Rappo says, step back in, son. So he does and hits one softly on the ground over to second base. On the outfield grass, Dugas will check that. It was Jordan Thompson there who makes the play and throws to first in time for the out. So Florida breaks the string of scoreless innings, but they can only get one, the home run by Evans. We're headed to the eighth inning here in Omaha. It's LSU 11, Florida 3. You're listening to the Men's College World Series on the Westwood One NCAA Radio Network. Do you love the game of golf? Do you live it, breathe it, stay up all night thinking about it? As a PGA professional, you can turn your love of golf into a career. Whether you're passionate about helping others improve their game, putting innovations to work that drive the sport forward, or promoting a more equitable and inclusive golf community, a PGA membership can get you there. Join the nearly 28,000 PGA professionals who love and lead the game of golf. Visit pga.org slash work in golf to turn your passion into a profession. John Bishop back here at the College World Series, 11-3 LSU as we head to the eighth inning. One thing Dylan Cruz wanted to do before he left for the major leagues was to give LSU a national championship. Here's what it would mean to him. It'll be the greatest moment of my life for sure. You know, this is um, it's a tough decision out of high school for me, uh, you know, to, to take my name out and, and go to college. And, um, you know, I wanted to go to college and experience this, experience LSU, be a dude here and, um, you know, win a national championship. And if I was able to win a national championship here, it'd be the uh, – best accomplishment i've ever had for sure by the way there is a brick warehouse that sits in sanford florida where dylan cruz was taught by an old met scout by the name of mo piche that warehouse is now for sale guess who wants to spend four million dollars to buy that warehouse to have it converted into a hitter's clinic and name it mo's place dylan cruz (laughs) who next month will hear his name called first in the Major League Baseball draft. Now as Cruz steps to the plate, we go back up to the booth, and to call the eighth inning, here's Kevin Cooper. All right, John, thanks very much. Yeah, he's got a chance to make a little more history, does Dylan Cruz, as he steps into the batter's box against Blake Purnell. With a national title, would become one of four players to win the Golden Spikes Award and the national title in the same year, Purnell missing wide for ball one. And what it says based on the first three that have done it, He's got at least a 66% chance of being a major league manager someday because it's Tim Wallach, Terry Francona, and Mark Kotze. Two of those three are big league managers right now. Correct. All three had stellar major league careers, but Terry Francona and Mark Kotze both managing in the big leagues. Francona with the Guardians and Kotze trying to keep the Oakland athletics going. Where? Well, somewhere. 
One ball, one strike to Cruz. Liner to right center. That'll drop in for a base hit. It'll skip all the way to the wall. Cruz on his way to second, motoring around second. Here he comes to third. The throw on its way. Not in time. A sliding triple for Dylan Cruz to start the eight. I'm going to tell you right now, Kevin, if that was goodbye to the LSU fans for Dylan Cruz, they will take it. That's exactly what he does. He hit it hard. He busted it hard out of the box. He knew where he was going. He knew he was making it to third base, and he pumped his way around the bases and went in with a sprawling slide across the bag at third to the delight of this crowd wearing purple and gold. Just his second triple all season long. Got a point at his finger where the ring is going to sit one day. Or perhaps in the next hour. First pitch to Tommy White misses inside for ball one. They can't get all those ring size that quick. They're in the dugout right now. Are they they have a ceremony at the end of it, I'm sure. I don't know. Maybe they got them from a gumball machine. <laughs> Do they still have those? One ball, no strikes. White, little looper, shallow center, drops in for a base hit. Cruz will score. White jogging into first with an RBI single. The Tigers got that run right back, and it's a nine-run lead, 12-3, LSU in the eighth. I'll tell you what, you take a look at the resilience of this team, and John Bishop talked about it a little bit earlier tonight, the fact that they had to come from behind in the regional. They had to play out of the loser's bracket here in Omaha. They had to fight off elimination for three straight games. They could have gone an entirely different way after yesterday, but they have come roaring back. Morgan fouls it off to left, and guess what? Paul Skeens is up in the LSU bullpen starting to throw. This is bound to raise at least an eyebrow in a nine-run ball game. One strike and nothing. Purnell is set. The pitch outside for a ball. Not my job to speculate. I don't know the young man. I don't know the young man's arm. But in this type of ball game, is it a necessity to potentially put the number one draft pick on the mound on three days rest after throwing more than 100 pitches? On the ground to the right side. That's going to trickle through into right field for a base hit. White slams on the brakes at second on that slow roller. A ball that had eyes, and it found its way past two Florida defenders in the right. Morgan with his second hit of the evening. First and second. Nobody out and a run in in the LSU eight for Gavin Dugas. Every player wearing an orange jersey on the field right now as they walk back to their position as their head down looking straight at the ground because they have watched what was within their grasp in the first inning of this ball game be ripped away by LSU. Two nothing Florida after one is a wild pitch gets past Ryapel. Advancing to third is White to second is Morgan. 2-0 lead for Florida going into the second, then six LSU runs in the second, four more in the fourth. They exchange runs in the seventh, and now a run on the board in the eighth and a chance for more with runners at second and third and nobody out. Baseball is such a tough game. It's such a bittersweet game. It's something that's built on overcoming failure. One out of Dugas. Inside, ball two. You think about Jack Caglione. What are the home run title? Hit two of them here. Had a two-run lead on the mound with the game in his hands and couldn't get out of the second inning of this game. Two balls, no strikes. Foul the way, off to the right. It'll be a long offseason thinking about that and, you know, the joy of being able to perform the way he did but the sorrow with the way it ended. Barring a miracle comeback here by the Florida Gators. And that miracle could become even more dramatic if Dugas delivers here. The 2-1. Ball inside, ball three. Three balls, one strike. White is at third. Morgan at second. Cruz has already scored a triple, a single, and a single in the inning. Against Blake Purnell, the bullpen going again for Florida. Purnell, the fifth pitcher of the night. 
tried inside and it's ball four the three one pitch misses the bases are loaded for lsu in the eight and Braden joe bear to the plate and joe bear with an opportunity to finish this one off if it's not already done in a 12-3 game in the eighth. He has two home runs in the College World Series, 13 on the year, three hits tonight. Bases loaded, nobody out. And Jobert, first pitch swinging, short hop picked up by Rivera at short, throws to second for one, can't turn two. White will score. It's a 13-3 lead for LSU. Morgan to third as Joe Bear gets the RBI as 47th on the ground out and a 13-3 advantage for the LSU Tigers. So Jordan Thompson back to the plate. 13-3 advantage with runners at the corners and one out. And Purnell back to work. Thompson, watch that one sail wide of the zone, out of the right-hand batter's box, and it's 1-0. Blake Purnell was a hero yesterday, got a win, but clearly is laboring right now and is watching this one just get away. Two runs into the eighth, two on, the 1-0 pitch. Almost caught him inside, 2-0. Thompson tonight, an RBI single in the second, RBI single in the fourth. Two hits tonight after one hit in the series. The 2-0 to Thompson. Fouled straight back into the upper deck, below us, and it's 2-1. The party atmosphere has already reached the bleachers. An LSU banner being held by the fans in right center in the bleachers. The 2-1 swing and a miss. Thompson even now with Purnell 2-2. And And they're going to hold that banner until the end of this game. Happily. Out in right center field. A long time for a proud program. Since 09, they won the title last. The 2-2 in the air to left. Shelnut going back. Shelnut still going, gets to the edge of the track, makes the catch, tagging at third, and scoring is Morgan. Sacrifice fly for Jordan Thompson, and a 14-3 LSU lead. Two down in the eighth. We pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is the Westwood One NCAA Radio Network, your home for the national championships. LSU, one day after losing 24-4. First pitch to Pearson, and it hit him. Another free pass issued by Florida pitching. It's been one of the huge stories of the night. The fourth hit batsman of the night to go along with eight walks. Twelve free tickets to first base tonight from Florida pitching. And something that you talked about, the the big inning, the six-run inning in the second, and that came about specifically because of that, walks and hit batters. It's been the theme. It's continued straight on through. Here's Travinsky. Two on, two out. Looks at a first pitch strike over the outside corner. Travinsky walked with the bases loaded in the seventh, and it forced in a run. He's got Jobert at second, Pearson at first. The 0-1, just wide, one ball, one strike. Two down, top of the eighth inning, 14-3 LSU. The 1-1, almost through that one to the backstop, 2-1. and one. It's amazing how similar these two games are. The margin is not as big yet, but... Very, very similar ball games in which one team got behind and then steamrolled the other. There was nothing that the other side could do about it. Each team getting steamrolled had a two-run lead. 
Travinsky oh, fouls it off. Remember that game yesterday that was 24-4 was 3-1 LSU going into the third before the steamroller wearing orange and blue showed up at the chuck. And if you look at it, Kevin, I mean, the way the College World Series had been up to that point, that looked like, you know, you were going to see a pretty big a pretty big advantage at two runs, and we were going to go nip and tuck the rest of the way. It's been nothing like that. Two balls, two strikes. Travinsky inside missed. And Purnell trying to come in on the right-hander, and it's three balls, two strikes. Runners will be moving. Two out, three in, eighth inning. Travinsky against Purnell. The 3-2 pitch. And a bouncing ball gloved by Rivera. Long throw from the outfield grass. Safe. He pulled him off the bag. Heyman couldn't hold the bag as he stretched to get the throw from Rivera. It'll be an infield hit for Travinsky. His first hit of the College World Series. That was a spectacular play by Rivera who got a chance to set his feet from the outfield grass through a laser. The problem is it was high. Heyman was in his stretch, so as he came up to get the ball, his foot came off the bag. It's a good call by the first base umpire. And now the ninth man to bat in the inning is Cade Beloso. First pitch swinging, bouncing ball to second. Curlin flips to first in time to retire the side. Nine men bat, three men score. They leave them loaded again in the eighth inning. They've left plenty on tonight, have the LSU Tigers, 17 to be precise. And they're up 14-3. From the Westwood One NCAA Radio Network, this is the Men's College World Series. Science is not an opinion. People come before pipelines. It's not too late to act on climate. No one is above the law. At Earth Justice, we hold these beliefs to be self-evident. As a national legal nonprofit fighting for your right to a healthy environment, we are 150 plus lawyers representing clients free of charge because now more than ever, the Earth needs a good lawyer. No one fights more cases on the environment than Earth Justice. And we win because these are fights we cannot lose. We win for scientists so they can serve at the EPA. We win at the Supreme Court because clean water is for everyone. We win against fossil fuel plants so communities can breathe freely. If you believe what we believe, then help us fight the good fight and help us keep winning by going to earthjustice.org today. That's earthjustice.org. My daughter Brinley is here at St. Jude. Coming here was literally life or death and it was so scary, but St. Jude is fighting for one goal, like this one mission, life. And that gave us hope. We haven't received a single bill from St. Jude, so I really can just focus on what's best for Ridley. Finding cures, saving children. Learn more at stjude.org. New pitcher for the LSU Tigers, the third of the night. It's Gavin Guidry. We've seen Gavin Guidry in this College World Series. We've seen him in the Championship Series. We saw him yesterday, one and two-thirds innings, two hits, two runs, one earned, one walk, two strikeouts, through just 21 pitches in the College World Series. His fourth appearance, overall three innings, five hits, three runs, two earned, one walk, and four strikeouts. Freshman is only the fourth LSU pitcher to pitch on back-to-back days the entire of this season.
championship series leading the country or second in the country to Florida Gulf Coast in home runs. Well, Florida passed them all. And now the Gators lead the nation in home runs. And barring a barrage of LSU homers in the ninth, small consolation to the Gators, they'll end as the nation's most prolific power hitting team. Langford down a strike, and now Gidry misses low, evening it up one and one. I left working in baseball, Kevin, right when people were starting to talk about the importance of OPS. This dude has an OPS of almost 1,300. That's good, <laughs> That's right? That's really good. Yeah. The 1-1. One, one. In the air, right side, playable. Morgan being called off by Dugas in foul ground up the right field line. And Langford is retired. And if that's the last time we see Langford in a Florida uniform, what a career he has had. He's certainly going to be top three in the draft. He hit the two longest home runs in the Men's College World Series since the series moved to downtown Omaha from Rosenblatt. My guy who's got a very bright future, Jack Caglione, fouls that first offering away. All three of his home runs, including the one tonight, traveling more than 400 feet. It's not just the home runs, though. He's a complete player. Defensively, he's everywhere. Fouled away by Caglione, and it's nothing in two. Frustrating night for Jack Caglione, the starting pitcher tonight for Florida. Just did not have the sharp control that he needed in this one. One in the third inning, two hits, six runs, three walks, a wild pitch. He hit two. Rough outing. One ball, two strikes as that ball skips up to the plate. And the amazing part at, about it is he hit the leadoff hitter with, hitter with the first pitch of the game, and then he settled in and looked dominant for the rest of that first inning, and then a switch flipped in the second inning. It was all gone. One ball, two strikes. Gidry into the wide, and the pitch to Caglione. Wave and a miss. Chase that one out of the zone. It's been a rough night at the plate for Caglione. Hit once struck out swinging three times and a player who is going to be somebody who gets talked about a lot next year as a top five pick in the draft it's going to end his young college season with a very rough night he'll be back and you hope it's something that he can build on Here's Rivera out front, swings and misses, and it's nothing to want. And it feels ridiculous to say that. He led the nation right. in home runs yeah. oh. and set a record. Good luck next year. Yeah, right. Build on being one of the best two-way players in college baseball. The 0-1 off the end of the bat, rolls it to short. Up with it and a throw across. Thompson wide, and he's safe. Thompson, who had two errors yesterday, throws wide of first base allowing Rivera to reach. And it'll be an error, the 17th of the year on Thompson. Trey Morgan did a really good job of smoothly catching and trying to windmill his arm to tag the runner. He's fun to watch. He was fun to talk to. Yeah, enjoyed him a lot. Shift on now for BT Ryapel. Three infielders to the right side of the infield. And Ryapel takes a first pitch breaking ball for a strike. Ryapel, 23 years old, was at Coastal Carolina for three seasons. Second year with the Gators. And the veteran leader of this team. Pitch inside, did he go? No swing. And the appeal to David Savage at third. And the count evens up one ball, one strike. 14-4. LSU in the bottom of the eighth inning. No baseball national championship since 2009. The Tigers closing in on their seventh. The 1-1 one, one in there for a strike, and it's 1-2. and two. And Gidry sees the finish line to this eighth inning. At first is Rivera. Tiger fans standing as one through this ballpark. One ball, two strikes to Ryapel. On the ground, right side. Field throw to first by Dugas in time. Inning over. Hit into the shift, the slow roller, and Ryapel is retired to close the eighth. Solo home run from Curlin gets a run on the board, but Florida still down 10 as we head to the ninth, 14 
to four. You're listening to the Men's College World Series on the Westwood One NCAA Radio Network. Wesley Financial Group is not a law firm. This story is called The Ugly Truth About Timeshare. If you think you've done your family a favor by buying a timeshare, you need my help. Hello, I'm Chuck McDowell, CEO and founder of Wesley Financial Group. Ten years ago, I started helping folks cancel their timeshare. In the process, started what's now called the timeshare cancellation industry. Timeshare is the only thing that you can buy that you can't tell me how much it's going to cost or when it's going to end. When you buy a timeshare, you give them a blank check to fill out any amount they want for annual maintenance and assessment fees. The crazy thing is, this never ends. Even when you die, your family's now going to be stuck with this burden. Stop the insanity today. Call my office now. If we take you as a client, I guarantee we'll cancel your timeshare or you'll pay nothing. Call for your free information kit. 800-462-3333. That's 800-462-3333. 800-462-3333. This university especially when I grew up uh, in New Orleans, you know, wanting to be Mikey Mato, you know, Ryan Chef, uh, Jared Mitchell, uh, you know, watching highlights of the 2009 National Championship on repeat on YouTube when I was a kid. And, you know, this, this means the world. You know, one, just being in Omaha and two, playing for a National Championship. Uh, for a Louisiana kid like Cade Beloso, it means the world to get a chance at that ring for his state, for his family, for his friends. And there's some hugs happening already in that LSU dugout. I'm looking down at Cade Beloso, giving hugs to his head coach down in the dugout. He did the entire dugout. He went from one end of the dugout to the other. He's hugging everybody right now. And you can hear the emotion in his voice, and that's before this championship series ever started, especially to these kids who are Louisiana kids who grew up as fans of this program, now contributing to this program, and three outs away from dog dogpiling with this program in a championship. And Dylan Cruz, one more at bat. Lines to center field for a base hit. Of course. Dylan Cruz, one more at bat, fourth hit of the night. I know you'd ever want to do something like this, but pull him and give him the curtain call. We'll see. It's a 10-run game. Cruz is going to have to pry him out of the ball game. I think. Time has been called. And they want the ball. They want the ball. The last hit of the career of Dylan Cruz. The ball has been secured. And, and his, his position in the game has also been secured. He's staying. Yes, he's not leaving. But the ball will. Tommy White will step in. He did the ring me as he got to third on that triple did Cruz, much like Angel Reese did for the women's basketball team as White tries one down the right field line, dropping foul. Long run out there for Ty Evans, just couldn't get there in foul ground. You know what? I'm going to call myself out on that one. That's wrong what I was thinking to do. He's got to be on the field for that dog pile. Yes, correct. Good call. Yeah, that, that was just stupid on my part. <laughs> I, it, it was the emotion of give the kid his curtain call, give him it. But, no, he's going to want to be right down. By the time he gets in from center field, he's probably going to be right on the top of that dog pile when it happens. He's going to have to fight off guys like Cade Beloso and Tommy White. <laughs> Those are big guys, yeah, too. No, they're not winning that fight. The 0-1. Low and away. One ball, one strike. Attendance tonight, 24,878. That sets a Men's College World Series record of 392,946 for the series. The 1-1 missed low to white, and it's 2-1. and one. And for just the championship finals, 75,428. Wow the most ever for a three-game championship finals in Omaha or anywhere. The 2-1, big cut and a miss. White had a design, had a thought, had a notion, not only of his fourth hit of the night, but his 25th home run of the year. Two balls, two strikes. Three hits tonight for White, 12 in the series. Put him on the all. College World Series team. The 2 2. Fouled away. Kevin, I don't think I overemphasized the point, and you obviously were here. You lived here. You lived it. But this College World Series is what was envisioned when they decided to move to this building. And we did back in 2011. Not these last two games, but the rest of it. In general. In general. 
Don't let the truth get in the way of a good story, Kevin. The 2-2. Two, two. High ball three. Three balls, two strikes. Try to make a point here. If you nodded off after Saturday and were just waking up, absolutely. I can understand nodding off yesterday in a 24-4 game. Three balls, two strikes. Florida was running up 10 yesterday. Not moving on the 3-2 and a bouncing ball past the diving halter at third. It'll trickle in the left. Cruz motoring around third. They're going to wave him home. The throw to second. Cruz will slide across home plate with an LSU run. 15-4 Tigers. And Cruz leaves the field for the final time, touching home plate and heading to the LSU dugout on the RBI double from Tommy White. Well, we thought he did that in the eighth inning, but now he does it once again in the ninth inning. And again, not unlike the triple, he was motoring as soon as that ball was hit. He gave the third base coach a chance to score him. He hesitated just a bit as he got to the bag, but there wasn't even a throw. That was all about the hustle. There's Trey Morgan. 15 runs on 21 hits. Morgan, a big cut and a miss. And it's nothing and one. Blake Purnell at this point just trying to finish off the ninth inning for Florida. There is bullpen activity ready out there if needed. Morgan into the left center field gap. That'll split the gap. It gets past the left fielder, Shellant. All the way to the wall. White will score. RBI double for Trey Morgan. 16 to 4 LSU. The words I used a little bit earlier where the end of this game could end up being like a giant LSU party. And guess what? The party started long ago and it is on here in Omaha right now. There was some discussion. If this were an aggregate scoring series, Florida had it wrapped up. That was before the game. LSU must have heard that conversation. They're not only threatening to win the national title, they're threatening to win it in the aggregate scoring. 16 runs on the night tonight. There's going to be a pitching change for Florida as they are going to try to stem this right now. And El Purnell did the job that he was potentially capable of doing, but... He was overmatched out there tonight. One, 50 seconds to go. Indiana with the basketball in the four court. Mitchell now backs up. She's going to try a long three from about 28 feet. Rims out no good. Boston comes down with a rebound. Next up, straight talk from Doug. Ever notice that saying no offense is offensive? Like, no offense, but you're overpaying for your wireless. See? Offensive. That's the straight talk talking. Get unlimited plans as low as $35 a month from straight talk on America's most reliable 5G network. Available at Walmart and Walmart.com. On the $35 plan, first 10 gigabytes data at high speed, then 2G speeds. Refer to the latest terms at straighttalk.com. Based on most first place ranking, root metrics, second half, 2022 assessments of 125 metros. Experience is varied, not an endorsement. New pitcher for the Florida Gators is Fisher Jamison. His 11th outing of the year, a 1-3 record, 13.89 earned run average. 11 and two-thirds innings, 20 hits, 19 runs, 18 earned, 7 walks, and 14 strikeouts for Jamison, making his first appearance in the College World Series. Number just caught my eye, Kevin. 16-4. Aside from 16 to 4. Yes, sir. LSU tonight at the plate is 22 for 44. They're batting 500 tonight. Florida is 4 for 29. Okay, and that doesn't, even, that doesn't even kick in with the eight walks that they've received or the, what is it, four hit batters now? How about 11 of 19 for LSU with two out? That's a 580 <laughs> average with two out. Florida 0 for 9. Incidentally, with two out tonight, it has been a dominant performance, as dominant really as Florida was yesterday in their record-breaking 24-4 to win. That is LSU tonight in what is currently a 16-4 to advantage. They've held Florida to four runs on four hits this evening. 
Downtown Omaha is going to be Party City Ooh. tonight after a 14-year wait for this one. And don't forget, in 2017, it was Florida that won the championship by beating LSU. So payback comes six years later. If you happen to be an establishment that sells malted and popped beverages, may I recommend stocking up in the next 45 minutes? Maybe keeping the doors open a little later tonight? That might be a good idea. Gavin Dugas, first pitch in the air, center field. Langford on the run, shy of the track. He'll make the catch. Tagging at second and advancing to third is Morgan on the deep fly ball out off the bat of Gavin Dugas. Now it's fully night in Omaha. The sun is down. The lights have taken hold. The wind has died down, not blowing out with near the ferocity it was earlier. And as we know, even with more home runs this year, center field, Ball's not getting out much at night. Now, that's Death Valley here, and it almost always is, with the exception of yesterday. Here's Braden Joe Bear. Joe Bear, a three-hit night. Infield coming in. Want to protect against that 17th run here in the ninth inning. 16-4 lead for LSU and a pitch in the dirt for ball one. Trey Morgan, the base runner at third. Low strike called at the knees, one and one. You're a Florida infielder. You're coming in for the, you know, potential play at the plate with the infield in. You're looking down. You're kicking it dirt. And everybody who's in the infield is doing it right now. What else is there for you right now? There's nothing that they could have done. The one one. Trivet to right field. That is a no doubt. Over the bullpen. Braden Joe Bear. With a two-run shot, putting a cherry on top of this national championship clincher. 18-4, to four, LSU in the ninth. Well, wherever Joe Boo is right now, <laughs> I'm going to guess you're going to want to keep him there game one next year. Holy cow. That one jumped out 18 to 4 the exit velo 106 the distance 394 on a line above the bullpen and right if jordan thompson tried to hold up his swing and could not and it's nothing in one 18 runs 23 hits for lsu Now, Gray was fouled at the ankles. And they're going to take a look at this to see if there's anything malicious here. So this could turn into a potential five- or six-point play opportunity. Wow. Chelsea Gray got the ball at the top of the key, launched, hit the three-pointer from way outside, and got fouled in the process, went to the ground. And we'll have to take a look here and see if there was anything flagrant with that foul. So sitting here talking about the Indiana Fever, 5-31 and 31 last year. They were the worst in the WNBA. They were last in every statistical category, but they're a much improved team this year, considered an up-and-coming squad, and we're seeing that tonight led by number one overall pick of this past draft, Aaliyah Boston from South Carolina. Boston was the NCAA Player of the Year, and the comparisons have already begun, of course, to Asia Wilson, who led South Carolina to a college championship herself. Same size, same type of game, and same type of college success. As the South Carolina won the title in 2018 with Wilson, and then 2022 with... Aaliyah Boston there. And this will be a flagrant foul. So the crowd is going to erupt when they get this news. A flagrant one. So Chelsea Gray is going to go to the free throw line. 
She hit the three. She's going to get the foul. Set that up for ball two. Freshman all SEC pick this year, Jared Jones. The 2 0. Big cut and a miss for Jones. Healthy freshman from Marietta, Georgia, six foot four, two hundred thirty pounds. Yep, big guy. Ryan Kelly, the football coach, was here. You might want to talk to him. The two one, hot shot up the middle for a base hit. The hit parade continues. The biggest argument in the LSU dugout right now is who can hit, because everybody gets a hit. Oprah's handing out hits tonight in Omaha. 24 hits for the Tigers. Mad fight at the bat rack right now. Let me <laughs> add him. Here comes Travinsky. Got his first hit of the series in the eighth inning. Eighteen to four on the heels of a 24-4 game the other way. Big cut by Travinsky. Missed that one. Nothing in one. I want you to roll it back in your mind for just a moment because we've seen two absurd blowouts in the last two games of this championship series. So we're going to miss Travinsky down two strikes. Remember the 10th inning of game one? I do. Langford hit a rocket to left field. Ten feet in either direction, Florida wins game one. How does that change things? I oh, think. we wouldn't be here tonight. Is Travinsky... Takes a called third strike, and that'll end the inning. Four-run score in the ninth. Combined score the last two days, Florida 28, LSU 22. Huh. The difference, LSU's up 18-4 in the deciding game three. We move to the bottom of the ninth. Three outs from a title from the Westwood One NCAA Radio Network. This is the Men's College World Series. Times of transition whether from a sad event or a joyful one, can leave us feeling adrift. Social connections are an important part of a healthy life. Being isolated and lonely can be harmful to your health. It can lead to high blood pressure, a greater risk of heart disease, and early onset dementia. So it's important to build and maintain connections to people, not just in your family, but others whose relationships bring meaning to your life trying a new hobby, volunteering, exercising, even using your phone or other device to stay in touch with others. All these can be great ways to keep up your social connections and your physical and mental well-being. Visit connecttoeffect.org to see if you're at risk of social isolation and find ways to get connected. This message is furnished by United Healthcare and AARP Foundation. Hi, it's Drew Barrymore here with a few of my favorite things that are absolutely free. Taking a walk in the rain, petting a dog, and streaming movies and TV shows on Pluto TV. Did I just say Pluto TV is free? Yes, I did. You can even watch Pluto TV for free while you pet a dog. Pluto TV has thousands of movies and TV shows all for free. Pluto TV, stream now, pay never. Just twice with LSU getting three more outs will a team in the last 42 College World Series win a national championship after losing their second game in Omaha. Standing in, Luke Heyman takes the first pitch, swing and a miss, down a strike. There was the 2016 Coastal Carolina team that beat Jay Johnson's Arizona squad. Scott, you remember that. I do remember it well. The 0-1, one hopper to the shortstop. Thompson sets, throws across a rocket to first to retire. Haven, and there's one gone in the night. It's all a precursor of what we're going to end up seeing here in a couple of moments, but as everybody was warming up, there were hugs being exchanged by LSU players on the field, salutes to the crowd that's out in the outfield. Uh, this is just a love fest right now for LSU and so richly deserved for the way they clawed their way back in this College World Series and tonight with an emphatic statement in the championship game. 
Here's Ty Evans, first pitch swinging, ground ball. Thompson loads, fires from short, out number two. One out away from their first national championship since 2009. Every Tiger fan in Omaha, in Baton Rouge, in Shreveport, in New Orleans, standing, cheering, hugging. Dale Thomas will pinch it for Florida. The last hope for the Gators here in the night. And a final thought before it unfolds for me, Kevin, is this. Everybody who is wearing a gold jersey right now in the dugout, out on the field, for that matter, everybody wearing an orange jersey, but certainly everybody wearing a gold jersey who was a baseball player growing up dreamed about the possibility of coming to Omaha, dog piling on the field and walking out with a national title. And these guys are about to do it. First pitch to Thomas is low for ball one. When you look out amongst the crowd, everyone is standing. Most because it's 2023, are holding their phones above their head to get the picture of the title. Swing and a miss. One ball, one strike. You wouldn't believe it if I didn't show you this grainy video from the 33rd row. I was there the night they won the title. One ball, one strike. Low ball two. Two and one to Dale Thomas. And on a crystal clear, comfortable night in Omaha, a drought long by LSU standards of 14 years is about to end. The 2-1 inside, ball three. Tough being Dale Thomas right now, but he wants to be a Navy SEAL when he's done playing, so he's tough. I think he can handle this moment. Yep. Three balls. And a strike, 18-4 LSU, the 3-1 pitch. Thomas lines it to left, there's a base hit. Dale Thomas with a College World Series single with two out in the ninth. And that'll prolong the celebration for a moment. Cody, Colby Halter, rather, to the plate. Halter, tonight 0 for 3. Fifth hit for the Gators. Gidry trying to close this one out for LSU. The Tigers ready to come springing out of that dugout. First pitch to Halter. Strike one. Subdued applause for strike one. Everyone's standing. Hard to clap when your phone's being held over your head. The 0-1 to Halter. Fouled away. And now the Gators are down to their final strike. One skinny strike separating LSU from a national title. The LSU chant begins. Halter ready. Gidry set. No balls. Two strikes. Fouled away. There is a nervous sort of anticipation, even in an 18-4 game in this building. It's almost as if LSU fans don't want to jinx it by getting too (laughs) excited. No balls, two strikes. The wind of the pitch. Swing and a miss. It's over. And it's lucky number seven for LSU, their seventh national championship. And for just the second time in men's college World Series history, a team has won seven national titles. The LSU Tigers, men's college World Series national champions. And the dog pile is officially underway confetti spraying into the air and now this is the moment that they had waited for this is the moment they had dreamed of we talked about it and now they get an opportunity to share it with their baseball playing brothers what you had to turn and look toward when you were down in the regional when you were down in the losers bracket here at the college world series when you had to leave here yesterday 
with a humiliating 20-run loss. And had to come back out here and try to find something tonight. They not only found it, but they displayed it for everyone to see. The grit, the toughness, the baseball playing ability, and more than joy right now. And I'm sure that there is joy, but there is also just a sense of accomplishment and relief for their head coach, Jay Johnson. You mentioned the fact that he had been here. He had had a one game to none lead, watched it get away when he was the head coach at Arizona and Coastal Carolina came back and beat them in three. He said he wanted to win this for these guys, for these players, more than anything else. Skeens just put his injured catcher on his back and brought him out to the dog pile. And this is it's just a beautiful scene, as it always is, but for this team, this has been incredibly special in terms of this entire run and this entire ride. And now they get to taste the fruits of that, not just tonight, but forever. Jay Johnson, the first coach to win a College World Series title in his first or second year at a school. The LSU Tigers win their first men's College World Series title since 2009 and become the first school to raise a trophy in basketball and the Men's College World Series in the same year. They raised it in women's hoops, and now it's being raised on the mound at the College World Series in Omaha. The LSU Tigers 2023 Men's College World Series National Champions. And now the shirts are being handed out. And those gold jerseys are being covered up by the white LSU National Champion shirts. Cade Beloso has got his shirt on. He's got the flag, and he's with John Bishop. You got your shirt. You got your title. How does it feel, Creo Bambino, to win one for LSU? Man, this is this is freaking awesome. I can't put into words what this means. And holy crap, this you know this state deserves it. This team deserves it. Damn sure these players behind me deserve it. Smith with that huge game the other